better. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs. Stop by the Ready Bookstore, located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game. You can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of the Henderson State Athletics. Henderson State Sports is brought to you on the Arkansas Rocks Radio Network. KDEL 100.9 FM and KVRC 1340 AM Arkadelphia. KZYP 1310 AM and K281CK 104.1 Malvern. KWPS 99.7 FM Cattle Valley Hot Springs and KYXK 106.9 FM Gurdon. The Henderson State Sports Network proudly presents Ready's Football. Henderson State Ready's Football is on the air. Ready's Football is brought to you by Pepsi, Southern Bank Corp, The Ready Bookstore, Arkansas Beverage Sales, Christus St. Michael, Southwest Auto Collection, Brookshire's, Hampton Inn of Caddo Valley, Wachita Children Youth and Family Services, Sodexo, Southwest Sporting Goods, and Baptist Health. Ready's Football, also brought to you by Domino's, Hostess Brands, Print Mania, Arkadelphia Dental Care, SCM Architects, The Plaza Twin Rivers, Twin Rivers Rehabilitation and Healthcare, Pennington Insurance, Java Primo, Chicken Express, Bluebird Real Estate, Subway, and Wendy's. Anderson State Sports Network is live and on location across the Great American Conference. Now it's time for the Domino's pregame show. Let's head to the booth for today's broadcast with the voice of the Reddies, Blake Smith. And a very pleasant good evening to you wherever you may be and however you may be. Thanks for making us part of this Thursday, August 31st, 2023. The 2023 GAC football season kicks off tonight with six games across schools in Arkansas and Oklahoma and none more important than right here at Geo Surfaces Field at Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, where the Henderson State Reddies welcome the ECU Tigers in the season opener. Welcome in, folks. Blake Smith here with you. Very happy to be with you. Welcome into the Domino's pregame show. Domino's Pizza is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. Pick up a pizza at 1412 Pine Street, Arkadelphia, or for delivery, call 870-246. 31-31, the Reddies and the Tigers starting to make their way onto the field to warm up for this season opening game. Always an exciting matchup and a chance for the Reddies to avenge a frustrating trap game loss last year in Ada where the Tigers got out to a hot start and stayed in control, defeating the Reddies 31-10. And that's got to be a game that the Reddies coaching staff looked at over the winter and spring. And so that's one of those games that we have got to have even on the road in poor conditions as that game was. Reddy's picked number three in the GAC coaches preseason poll. They are also receiving votes in the AFCA Division II poll. East Central is picked sixth in the preseason poll. They've got a lot of players at skill positions to replace, and we're going to see in addition to a new coaching staff, interim head coach John LaTrenta, who has spent time as the defensive coordinator for the Tigers, is going to fill in in that role for this season, and then they will address things in the offseason again as time goes forward. Last year's coach, of course, with some ties to Arkadelphia, Chris McCullough, now at University of Texas of the Permian Basin. And so the Tigers replacing not only their head coach, but their top running back, a top receiver as well as their all honorable mention GAC quarterback Kenny Hernser. It's going to be interesting. They do, they do however return Devin Roush, the D GAC defensive player of the year, plays a linebacker for the Tigers, uh, the black and orange variety, not the ones across the street that we will meet here in about 10 weeks or so. He's a very good defensive player and something for the ready offense to contend with. A lot of optimism, a lot of positive thinking for all these teams in the GAC as we get in, but none more so than the Reddies who returned their quarterback, their leading running back, all of their defensive line, and two out of their three 
top linebackers in the middle of that defense. They do, however, have a lot of depth to fix at receiver where you lose Xavier Malone after having lost Elliott Curry the previous season, two really strong receivers. Somebody's going to have to step up into that role for the Reddies, and they have several players who are willing and able to take that number one receiver role. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. David Sally will join our broadcast for the first time this season as he sits down with Sean Jones in our AD corner. You're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Hi, Ready fans. This is Athletic Director Sean Jones, inviting you to please consider supporting Henderson State's 430 student athletes by joining the Ready Club. Gifts to the Ready Club are made through the Henderson State University Foundation and provide the necessary funding to support scholarships and equipment expenses, facility improvements, capital projects, and more. For more information on the benefits afforded to Ready Club members, click on the support link at hsusports.com. To make a gift online, visit hsusports.com forward slash donate. Your generosity and ready spirit are appreciated. Picture this. It's Monday afternoon and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee $7.99, plus tax, of course. Now, picture this. It's Friday and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee more than you paid Monday. You feel bamboozled. But then, you hear this. Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. And so you danced and ate Domino's. Carryout only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Future Eddies, are you interested in a career in business? Henderson State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. We know you'd rather not be listening to an ad, but if you have to, a mini ad is better. Maybe even a Pepsi mini ad. Still all the flavor of the full-size bag. Just minier. Pepsi minis. That's what I like. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Arkadelphia or call 870-246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show. It's now time for our AD Corner segment, sponsored by Arkansas Beverage Sales. We're joined now with Athletics Director Sean Jones. Sean, it's been a long summer, but we're back. It's football season in Arkadelphia again. I know you, just like everybody else in town, are very excited to get things going tonight. Super excited about this first game, David. You know, it, it uh, looks so far away when you start to look at that calendar at the end of the previous athletic year, and then... You start to ramp up and, and build up in terms of your team and in terms of all the preparation that goes into it. And here we are. Uh, I know most importantly our guys are excited to play. You know, they reported on uh, Sunday, August 6th, and it's been a long, hot camp. Classes started on uh, August 22nd, so opportunity to play on a Thursday night under the lights, and um, they have certainly earned it. Uh, again, a real tough camp uh, as far as the, the heat. We feel fortunate it's a little cooler this week than it was the, the previous Thursday, so a lot of excitement and, and looking forward to watching our, our team and, and just being a part of this atmosphere tonight. This should be an exciting night. This should be an exciting team. You know, looking at this team coming back from last year, 16 starters back in terms of guys who started that last game of the season in 2022. You've got the GAC freshman of the year at quarterback and Andrew Edwards. Corey and Burrell ran for 1,000 yards last year. The offense looks like it should be really good once again. Do have to replace Xavier Malone, who is with the Atlanta Falcons currently, so that's a guy you're going to miss. But I know on that side of the ball, things are exciting. Uh, and another explosive offense potentially here in Arkadelphia this season. Yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of guys back uh, from a, a group that was uh, explosive and, and uh, a 
attack, you know, running the football and, and kind of the intermediate pass game, but also had the ability to go deep. Andrew came into his own last year, obviously, and proved himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the conference as a freshman and, and a great group. The offensive line, a uh, big part of that, got a lot of veteran guys back up front. We have had some injuries in camp, you know, um, unfortunately, uh, one or two not to return and, and one or two to, to come back. But um, a lot of question marks at wide receiver, um, a lot of talent there, a lot of young guys there. But just uh, the last two years, you had Elliot Curry and Xavier Malone. You know, you had a couple All-Americans uh, as, as your uh, number one target. And uh, unfortunately, you can't just uh, get one of those every year. You know, we get spoiled and, and taken for granted. But we've got a great core. It'll be exciting to see who emerges from that group. Um, but, you know, it's a great group of young men. They work extremely hard. Um, you know, excited for the opportunity that Andrew Laubenbach has as offensive coordinator. Uh, Hayden Hawk did a great job for us, uh, returned to his alma mater. And now, uh, you know, Andrew, who's been an offensive coordinator before in his career, was a college quarterback. He has the opportunity to, to call the plays and, and, and got a lot of guys back. So that should help them in that group as we uh, – uh, officially uh, get the season underway tonight. Yeah, and then on the other side of the ball defensively, the Reddies are pretty good last season in the front seven. I know they expect to be good again. Uh, you have all four starters back on the defensive line. Uh, so they really feel like they've brought back good players and also maybe upgraded the position with some more good players at linebacker. And then secondary, which was pretty young last year, has had an influx of new guys, transfers, junior college guys. And I know as a whole, they feel really good about this defense. I know you and I do too, just from talking in here. Yeah, I think if you look at the strength of our team, it's our defensive line. You start there. Um, probably no mistake the head coach coaches that group, Scott Maxfield, uh, outstanding football coach, obviously, but tremendous talent up front. I mean, um, you know, Shaq Robinson, um, what a great year he had and had that injury, unfortunately, against Harding last year, but he's back. Uh, Denzel Walter, who's just an incredibly physically talented veteran player that um, has just gotten better and better each and every year. Uh, Tyler Strain, who really came on last year. Cottrell Wallace, who came on last year, that same position on the outside. And then Gary Lewis, who just, you know, was incredible. A young man from South Arkansas who, uh, uh, you know, just has been an incredible addition to our program, tremendously talented. And there's great depth there, too. Um, linebackers, got a couple new guys, got some veterans back there, too. Some really good players for us a year ago, led by uh, Jacob Neal, who's back, but, but some some guys really push in there. And then you mentioned, you know, the secondary. Uh, we were so young last year and inexperienced. Um, the good news is, you know, those guys are a year older and, and more experienced. We've got some new guys in. Um, our newest coach, Will Wagner, a tremendous addition to the staff, been a Division II head coach, been at Northwest Missouri, won three or four na national championships there as an assistant. Um, so having his experience on the staff, I think, helps uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And Greg Holsworth is... is now an experienced veteran D coordinator for us does a great job. Uh, Dante Collins back there as well, coaching the safety. So um, you know, good group of coaches over there. Good group of coaches on the offensive side too, which which makes you feel good about this football team and, and the potential. 16 starters, as you mentioned, David, but uh, also um, just a, a, a tough group of kids, a hardworking group. Um, they play together, and, and hopefully, you know, each season's different. Hopefully, we see that with this group beginning tonight. Sean, we're excited to get the season underway. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you come game time. Yeah, appreciate having everybody here. Don't forget the ready shuttles are running up at 12th and Wilson. If you need to get a parking spot up there, ride down to the to the gate. A lot of fun stuff in the stadium tonight. Uh, we've got the Anheuser-Busch touchdown tent in the north side uh, of the stadium. Uh, appreciate Arkansas Beverage Sales, our sponsor of this segment, for their support of that. Uh, just yet another fan amenity, and then, of course, the traditional uh, great things that go with our uh, – you know, that go with our game day. Um, the show band, uh, they've had some illness this week, and so I know that's constricted their numbers for this game. Hope everybody gets to feeling better in that group because we know how it can go around the illness when school starts. And But they'll be here to, to play from the stands, have fun, cheer and palm, do a great job, ROTC, and then just having our students here and that energy. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it, Sean. Thank you very much. That was our AD Corner, sponsored by Arkansas Beverage Sales. We'll be right back with much more here on the Domino's pregame show and the Hendrick. At Southern Bank Corp., we are wealth builders for everyone. We see building wealth as helping people succeed in creating strong financial futures. For some, it's having tools to build credit and buy a first home. For others, working with our award-winning SBA team to launch or grow a small business. And still others might use our unique savings plan today to save for tomorrow's dreams. Wherever you are in your wealth building journey, Southern Bank Corp. can help. Stop by or visit BankSouthern.com to get started. Proud supporter of the Henderson Reddies. Southern Bank Corp., member of DIC, Equal Housing Lender. 
Java Primo, where amazing coffee is just the beginning. Visit Java Primo Coffee House, Cafe, and more on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia, on Central Avenue in Hot Springs, and on the Square in Magnolia. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, gifts, or desserts, Java Primo has something amazing for everyone. Shop for gifts and gift cards for your favorite ready online 24-7 at javaprimo.com. Subway restaurants are known for our sandwich artists, but our customers are the real creative geniuses. I like turkey breast, mustard, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and onions. I'll take the Italian BMT, make it deluxe with 50% more meat, and add provolone and bacon. How about rotisserie style chicken, chipotle southwest sauce, spinach, and green peppers? With our freshly baked breads, your choice of proteins, and an array of crisp veggies, you can create your own masterpiece. What combo will you make today? Let your creative genius shine at Subway. Hey Future Readies, are you interested in a career in technology? Kennesaw State University offers degrees in aviation, computer science, and engineering. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Your best life begins with your healthiest life. At Baptist Health, you'll find the comprehensive care you need for every person in your family. From pediatrics to primary care to women's health, we're equipped to partner with you in every phase of your wellness journey. You'll also find Baptist Health locations and clinics across the state, ensuring we're always there for you when and where you need us. Learn more about the state's most trusted name in healthcare, locate a clinic, find a provider, and more at baptist-health.com. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show. It's now time for our Ready Player Spotlight segment, sponsored by Baptist Health. We're joined now by Ready's quarterback, Andrew Edwards. Andrew, I want to start out just by going backwards a little bit, just for a minute. Um, you know, this time last year, you were the backup quarterback um, going into the fall, and we know what happened. Uh, you became the starter, and now, a year later, you've gotten the number one reps all through the spring and all through fall camp. You've been the the incumbent starter for a while now so I just want to pick your brain on you know what that's been like and, and has that been different for you now that going into this season you know you're the starter you've gotten all those reps what's that been like for you so far um, yeah it's been a little different um, you know anticipating um, to be the guy and um, you know there's a lot more noise and, uh, and pressure that goes along with that but um, you know with this position you got to block out all the noise and um, you know just go out there and, and uh, do your job um, but yeah, last year I, um, I didn't expect to play, but um, like now it, it is nice getting all the reps and um, getting all the preparation. So um, yeah, I'm feeling confident about uh, getting out there and starting. Things went well for you guys on offense last year. Um, and, and as our fans may know, we have an offensive coordinator switch. You know, Andrew Loudenback is calling plays this year. So I know he's changed some things a little bit schematically and some of the calls and designs of stuff. There's been a new install on offense. So just wanted to get your thoughts on what that's been like, kind of installing the new offense and how things are going, how comfortable you feel in the new system compared to the last one. Yeah, we got a lot of confidence in uh, Coach Loudenback. Uh, we, we really like what he's been putting in. And um, uh, uh, I really like what he's been putting in, and um, I think it's going to work uh, really well. Um, we're going to distribute the ball out a lot more. Um, it's going to be uh, a little more fast-paced offense, and um, I think it's going to work really well. So. You know, you talked about distributing it out a little bit more. You know, it's not a secret to anybody. Xavier Malone got a lot of the targets last year, and rightfully so. He was an All-American. Um, you know, he's in camp with the Falcons right now. So that's a guy that's not going to be here with us this season. But there's new faces that need to emerge, and, you know, there's going to be new targets for you to throw to at receiver specifically. So just uh, your thoughts on how that group has performed in fall camp and which of those guys have stood out to you, at least from the quarterback's perspective. Uh, yeah, a lot of them have stood out. We got a lot of depth and a lot of really good playmakers at the receiver position. Um, but Dawson Brown, a transfer guy, he, he's gonna he's gonna be starting at X for us. He looks really good. Um, you know, Chody Elijah, Chris Hatzis, um, you know, like all these guys, just playmakers. They're gonna go out there and, um, like I said, we have a lot of depth. Um, we're gonna have a lot of rotation. This ball's gonna get distributed a lot. Um, and I got faith in all those guys to go out there and make plays. So. 
You were the GAC freshman of the year last year. Uh, that was a big honor for you. And now again, as the incumbent starter, you mentioned it earlier, like there's more expectations now. What expectations do you have for yourself going into the season? Do you set personal goals? Obviously, there's the team goals. Do you have personal goals you want to hit going into this 2023 season? Uh, yes, I have uh, plenty of personal goals, but I just try and, uh, and not be uh, selfish. I just want to, my main goal is to win. I just want to win. I want to play and do my part. Um, and I want to win. I want to be a part of this team, and um, I just want us to be successful when it comes to championship. Andrew, thanks so much for your time. Best of luck against the Tigers. Thank you. Thank you. That was our Ready Player Spotlight, sponsored by Baptist Health. We'll be right back with much more here on the Domino's pregame show and the Henderson State Sports. Is that the sound of an ooey gooey cheesy crunchy slice of P-I-Z-Z-A? <laughs> Obviously, but as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh yeah, that's the sound of a freshly opened fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Close your eyes. Unless you're driving, then that's dangerous. But everyone else, close your eyes. Picture this. It's a Monday afternoon. You're standing at the counter at Domino's as they hand over a delicious, cheesy, melty, hot, large, three-topping pizza. You hand the smiling Domino's employee $7.99, plus tax, of course, of your hard-earned cheddar. You feel invigorated and alive. Now, picture this. It's a Friday. You're standing at the counter at Domino's as they hand over a delicious, cheesy, melty, hot, large, three-topping pizza. You hand the same Domino's employee more cash than you did on Monday. But that doesn't make any sense. But then, a radio commercial comes from on high and says, Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. You fist pump into the air, punching the roof of your car. You are alive again. But your fist hurts. But you're still thinking about Domino's. Dominoes. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. SCM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for over 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Hall. This year, SCM Architects have been privileged to work on the new Charles and Anita Cave Student Athlete Success Center and the restoration of the historic Captain Henderson House. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at scmarchitects.com. Brookshire's proudly supports the Henderson State Reddies football team. At Brookshire's, you can save on fuel or groceries with your points, where every dollar you spend earns you one point. Plus, score big with meat that is cut fresh daily and enjoy lower prices on the freshest produce. In a hurry? Let us do the shopping for you with our convenient curbside online ordering and pickup. Visit Brookshire's.com to place your order today. Brookshire's, your ultimate tailgating destination. Go Reddies and go Brookshire's. Hi, I'm Sadie, student and team leader. And I'm Lauren, student and agriculturalist. When we rise above alcohol and drugs, we reach for, expect, achieve, and accomplish more. The minute we think about using alcohol or drugs, we lower our chance of living our best life. When we rise above, we respect ourselves and lead by example. Being drug and alcohol free has always been the best way to be. Let's do this. Join the RAD movement. And challenge yourself to rise above alcohol and drugs. This message brought to you by Washtaw Children, Youth, and Family Services Prevention Program. Back here with you at Geo Services Field at Carpenter Haygood Stadium as the Domino's pregame show continues. Brady's about 37 minutes away from kickoff against the Tigers from East Central. It's now time for today's Wendy's weather forecast. Wendy's is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. Stop by their new location at 3130 Pine Street in Arkadelphia or give them a call 870-246-5077. Wendy's, deliciously different. A beautiful day here in Arkadelphia, perfectly clear, not a cloud in the sky, 85 degrees. That will drop pretty steadily as we go on throughout the ball game, about 71 to start your commute home, a low getting down to about 60 degrees, about 5 to 6 o'clock in that a.m. window. It's going to be nice and chilly. That dew's going to come up on those windows, a beautiful day here a slight breeze out of the northeast about six miles an hour low humidity high visibility you could not ask for better football weather except to maybe cool it down just a little bit 
We'll see how the heat affects some of these players. And early in the season, you have to look at your conditioning as well as your fluid intake. You can be in a really good shape as a player and still not be drinking enough water, and that causes you some damage. But then conversely, you can be drinking a lot of water and not be in as good a game shape as you need to be. And we know that football is a very unique sport when it comes to conditioning. And we'll see how that affects the ball game tonight, particularly in the early going before the sun goes down this evening. We'll step aside. Coming back, we'll take a look around the GAC as we have six games all across the conference tonight. A lot of excitement around the conference. It's some very interesting games. We'll come back with that. My predictions and more as the Dominatelis pregame show continues. This is Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy, all working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. Apparently, you've been ordering Domino's new bread twists as a decoy to keep others away from your pizza. Only you suddenly wanted more bread twists for yourself. There are worse things than choosing between either pizza or warm, dunkable bread twists and flavors like Parmesan, garlic, and cinnamon, like deciding between going to the dentist or DMV. So when it comes to giving you the best tasting problem you've ever had, sorry, you're welcome. Order any two or more of Domino's new bread twists or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each. Two item minimum handmade pan pizzas may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Java Primo, where amazing coffee is just the beginning. Visit Java Primo Coffee House, Cafe, and more on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia, on Central Avenue in Hot Springs, and on the Square in Magnolia. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, gifts, or desserts, Java Primo has something amazing for everyone. Shop for gifts and gift cards for your favorite ready online 24-7 at javaprimo.com. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs. Stop by the Ready Bookstore, located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game, you can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore, or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of Henderson State Athletics. Back here with you on the Domino's pregame show. It's time to take a look around the GAC, sponsored by our friends at Southwest Sporting Goods. Proud to offer a wide selection of sporting goods to fit your needs. Call them today, 246-2311, or give them a visit, 115 South 6th Street in Arkadelphia, a place that they have known and loved for a long time there in downtown Arkadelphia. Six matches inside the GAC tonight. We will try to do a better job this year of keeping up with our projections as they have been made. And we'll even have our series scores from games going into today. We will start. A lot of these are 6 o'clock kickoffs, so they're already underway. We will provide scores later in the game. And as we go throughout tonight, our kickoff one of only two in the league that are 7 o'clock kickoffs. First up, we'll go all the way out west to Alva, Oklahoma, where the longest road trip for any conference team in the season is taking place tonight. UAM is at Northwestern Oklahoma, and this has been a very split series. The series is tied at six matchups apiece. Six wins for each side in 12 matchups. Going to be an interesting year for both of these teams. Northwestern struggles again in the previous years have haunted them. UAM, meanwhile, has been a pretty consistent middle-of-the-pack team, but will their offense have as much give-and-go as Demilan Brown has graduated after what seems like a while? See who can take up, pick up the slack on the offensive side. I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair, both these teams trying to feel each other out and to figure out who they are as programs. I'm going to give the advantage to the visiting Bull Weevils, though, UAM 20, 
Northwestern 14. Southeastern Oklahoma makes a trip to Magnolia. We'll head to Southeastern next Saturday for our second game. Southern Arkansas hosting that one in Magnolia tonight. They lead the all-time series, 23 wins, 20 wins for Southeastern and three ties there. So Southern Arkansas is one of those teams that usually start off the season hot and they start to fade toward the end. What will the difference be? Maybe a kickstart to their season in Magnolia over a Southeastern team that should be much improved from the squad we saw last year that had a little bit of a reloading year after what we saw Dalton Hatley and that offense do a couple of seasons ago. I'm going to go with the home team this time, Southern Arkansas, 31 to 21, my prediction there. Harding, number 14 Harding, is at Southern Nazarene, where the Bisons have won nine of ten matchups between the two programs. Harding is one of those teams that it seems they never graduate. They seem to just reload every year in that flex bone style offense, just heavy runs. They have running backs everywhere, a good strong quarterback that can run the ball and can step back and throw when necessary, get one over the top if your secondary starts to fall asleep. I see Harding dominating this one. Southern Nazarene does have an interesting squad this year. Gage Porter returns for one more season but he will not be enough by himself to topple the Bisons. Harding takes this one 41 to 20. Our cross street rival, Washita Baptist, is in Weatherford, Oklahoma tonight. They're taking on Southwestern. Washita leads that all time series 14 to 4. And it is just another year for Washita, another situation. They've graduated some key offensive players. They will still run the football, and they'll still run it very effectively. How dominant will their defense be seems to be the question. Seems like the AFCA poll thinks that they'll be pretty solid as they've given the Tigers the number eight national ranking to head into the season and setting up for that matchup against Harding in October as they always do and of course the Battle of the Ravine to be played at Washita this year. I'm going with the Tigers tonight 42 to 10 over a Southwestern team that has their third coach in three years and still has some growing pains to go through. Arkansas Tech is at Oklahoma Baptist in the other 7 o'clock kickoff tonight. Arkansas Tech leads that overall series 6-3 and 1. The Wonder Boys record against the Bison from Shawnee. This game is in Shawnee and up on Bison Hill you never know what can happen. I expect this one to be a very exciting game. A couple of teams that are picked toward the bottom third of the league but could be one of those teams that sneak up and surprise you is I'm always I'm always nervous about Tech because it seems like every time we play them in Russellville they play us tough and the game goes overtime or even further or it's very competitive late. I'm going to give the advantage to the Wonder Boys on the road. Some special teams play going to come in here 28-27 my prediction for the Wonder Boys and finally here in Arkadelphia the Reddies host East Central. Reddies lead this overall series 19, 13, and 1, the Reddies' record against East Central. That, of course, going way back. This team's first overall meeting between these two clubs. I can't remember the exact year. I'll have to go back and look that one up. I'm really excited what the Reddy offense has. The question is, will the secondary be as improved as people think they are? Some new coaches, some new faces. A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of athleticism, and a little more experience in that ready secondary this year. I think that whomever East Central's quarterback is, they're going to struggle to get the ball out of their hands in the pass game because the front seven of the readies are just so good. I'm really excited to see what those guys have to offer, and I'm going with the readies tonight by a score of 38 to 13. I actually picked all six Arkansas schools to win. We'll be checking on those in our Southwest Sporting Goods scoreboard updates as time goes by. We'll take a break. We'll go back to David Sally as he sits down with head coach Scott Maxfield in this week's Coach's Corner. That and much more as the Domino's pregame show continues after this on the Henderson State Sports Network. Your best life begins with your healthiest life. At Baptist Health, you'll find the comprehensive care you need for every person in your family. From pediatrics to primary care to women's health, we're equipped to partner with you in every phase of your wellness journey. You'll also find Baptist Health locations and clinics across the state, ensuring we're always there for you. 
when and where you need us. Learn more about the state's most trusted name in healthcare, locate a clinic, find a provider, and more at baptist-health.com. Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Picture this. It's Monday afternoon and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee $7.99, plus tax, of course. Now, picture this. It's Friday and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee more than you paid Monday. You feel bamboozled. But then, you hear this. Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. And so you danced and ate Domino's. Carryout only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy. All working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show. It's now time for our Coach's Corner segment, sponsored by Brookshire's. We're joined now with head coach Scott Maxfield. Coach, it's been a while since we've done one of these, but after a long summer, football is back in Arkadelphia. I know you and your team have been working hard in fall camp the last several weeks. So to start things off, I just kind of want you to get your perspective on how you feel like camp went, any standouts that you saw, and just the general vibe of the team after the last three weeks of doing all-day football. Well, camp, camp was somewhat of a challenge the first week. We had really good weather. It, it, it was, you know, for this time of year, it was uh, it was possible to get out there and get a lot of good work done at, uh, on the schedule that we had set. But the second week, it got really hot. We had that, that heat wave that hit us, so we had to adjust our schedule. Uh, it beat us down a little bit, to be honest. Uh, you could really tell that it took a toll on the kids. And I think it hurt our execution. Uh, anytime you're out there in 100 degrees, it, it limits some of the things you can do, and I, I think it hurt us mentally a little bit. So uh, hopefully we've bounced back from that. We had to take a little bit of time off, cut some practices a little shorter uh, just to try to get their legs back on them. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we're in good enough shape. We didn't run as much probably as we had in previous camps just because of the heat. So uh, uh, we'll just see how we uh, react Thursday night. You've got East Central coming into Carpenter Haygood Stadium on Thursday night. They were a team last year who uh, was one of the big surprises in the GAC. They won nine games. It was their best season in about 30 years. Uh, they got the best of the Reddies on the road in Ada. But as we know, they've had a lot of turnover in their program, both in their coaching staff and also personnel-wise in certain spots. Uh, so what do you expect to see from the Tigers here on Thursday night? We know they have a strong defense. Devin Roush, the defending GAC Player of the Year, is back. Um, but there's some questions on offense, particularly at quarterback. What have you been able to glean from the Tigers uh, and just your preparation and watching film? Well, you know, first game of the year, it's really, really hard to, to gauge exactly what they're going to have and what they're going to do. But we, ha we have a pretty good idea. The, the new offense coordinator was the head coach at Northwest Oklahoma State, so he's there. So we anticipate the very same style that he did there. Uh, they, they really hit the transfer portal hard. They, I think they've got seven or eight transfers that are in their uh, starting lineup right now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how good those guys are. They do have, they do have a handful of all-conference guys back. Uh, so primarily on defense, they, they've got a pretty pretty new offensive line. So I think that'll be uh, something to look at. But they, they also at the quarterback position, 
uh, the kid they had was a three-year starter, and uh, he also left in the portal. So, uh, you know, we, we feel like it's going to be a really good matchup. I, like all first games, it comes down to execution, turnovers, playing smart, not getting stupid penalties, and, and being in the best shape, uh, better shape than the two teams. So, you know, we're probably going to try to have to rotate some kids early in the game and try to stay fresh for the second half. You mentioned their offensive line, and you know they might have some new guys who are getting their first college action or their first extended college action on Thursday night. That strikes me as a matchup where the Reddies could potentially have some success because I know you guys feel really good about your defensive line and really your entire front seven. So just talk about that, those two groups a little bit, particularly what you've seen from them at fall camp and who you have coming back in that front seven defensively. Well, we've, we've got a lot of uh, we've got a lot of returners in there. Uh, we haven't. We haven't played great in camp sometimes on the defensive line. We're not playing at the same intensity level as we did last year, so that's something that I've got to get corrected. But, you know, we've got Denzel Walter back, we've got Jack Robinson, we've got Tyler Strain, we've got Gary Lewis. All, all four of those guys were starters last year. So, you know, I'm going to lean on those guys and hopefully they'll raise their game up to a higher level than some of the things I've seen in practice uh, at times this fall. But, uh, we feel like we've upgraded our talent level, you know, on defense. Uh, we feel, feel pretty good about it if we can stay healthy. Uh, offensively, we're, we're really thin on the offensive line. We, we can't afford any more injuries there. So uh, we, we, we just got to stay healthy. And, uh, quarterback Andrew Edwards has had a good camp. Receivers, still a huge question mark. We really don't know who our go-to guy is. Uh, been very sporadic at receiver. Uh, one day some guys will look good, and the next day they don't. So, uh, be interesting there. Running back, we're really solid. We've got, we got four running backs we feel good about. So, you know, we may just have to lean on the run game and be a heavy run team uh, until we can figure out uh, what we've got passing game wise. Coach, we're excited to see the team play on Thursday night. Excited football's back in Arkadelphia. Thanks for your time and best of luck against the Tigers. Go, go Reds. That was our Coach's Corner segment sponsored by Brookshire's. We'll be right back with much more here on the Domino's pregame show in the Henderson State. At Southern Bank Corp., we are wealth builders for everyone. We see building wealth as helping people succeed in creating strong financial futures. For some, it's having tools to build credit and buy a first home. For others, working with our award-winning SBA team to launch or grow a small business. And still others might use our unique savings plan today to save for tomorrow's dreams. Wherever you are in your wealth building journey, Southern Bank Corp. can help. Stop by or visit BankSouthern.com to get started. Proud supporter of the Henderson Reddies. Southern Bank Corp. Member of DFC. Equal Order. Brookshire's proudly supports the Henderson State Reddies football team. At Brookshire's, you can save on fuel or groceries with your points, where every dollar you spend earns you one point. Plus, score big with meat that is cut fresh daily and enjoy lower prices on the freshest produce. In a hurry? Let us do the shopping for you with our convenient curbside online ordering and pickup. Visit Brookshire's.com to place your order today. Brookshire's, your ultimate tailgating destination. Go Reddies and go Brookshire's. Picture this. It's Monday afternoon and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee $7.99, plus tax, of course. Now, picture this. It's Friday and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee more than you paid Monday. You feel bamboozled. But then, you hear this. Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. And so you danced and ate Domino's. Carryout only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Blake Smith back here with you from Carpenter Haygood Stadium on the Domino's pregame show. It is now time to take a look at today's starting lineups for both teams. We will start with the Tigers from East Central defensively. Defensive end, number 51, Prince Umami Ellen, 6'7", 265, a redshirt junior from Lagos, Nigeria, by way of Tarleton State. Defensive tackle, 98, Michael Aram, 6'4", 300, a senior from Houston, Texas. Defensive end, 97, Yemi Oyasanya, 6'2", 240, redshirt senior from Norman, Oklahoma. With three, four sets of four linebackers, starting at 33, Kevon Curry, 6'2", 225, redshirt junior from Oklahoma City. 
46, Jackson Flower, 6'6", 245, a graduate student from Kansas City, Kansas, a grad transfer from Central Missouri. Number 12, Amir Muhammad, 5'10", 215, a junior from Red Oak, Texas. And number one, Devon Roush, 6'1", 215, a senior from Houston, Texas. The cornerbacks are seven, Martinez Hill, 5'9", 170, a senior from Fort Worth, Texas, a transfer from Division Three, Mary Harden Baylor. And 20, Geo Waller, 6'1", 185, a junior from San Antonio, Texas, by way of Bluefield State in West Virginia. Free safety is nine, Jimmy Pence, 5'10", 160 pound senior from Nottasolga, Alabama, by way of Bethany College. And the strong safety is number 31, Cam Pear, 5'10", 185, redshirt sophomore from the Colony, Texas. For the offensive unit for the Tigers, looks like this. Left tackle, 74, Alejandro Flores, 6'8", 314. A sophomore from Glendale, Arizona, by way of Lincoln University out of the MIAA. Left guard is 78, Sedarian Crooks, 6'3", 315. A junior from Houston, Texas, by way of Sol Ross State down in Texas. Center is 63, Tyson Johnson, 6'1", 285. Redshirt sophomore from Corinth, Texas. Right guard is 62, Ty Dodd, 6'5", 290, a redshirt freshman from Eufaula, Oklahoma. And the right tackle is 79, Colby Thomas, 6'4", 285, a redshirt senior from Alito, Texas. Again, the Tigers this year under the direction of interim head coach John LaTrenta in his first season as a head coach, no record. G the East Central Tigers picked sixth in the GAC preseason poll. For the ready defense, we'll start up front with that really strong defensive line. Defensive end, zero, Gary Lewis, 6'2", 215, a redshirt sophomore from Fordyce. And 40, Tyler Strain, 6'3", 283, redshirt senior from Katy, Texas. Defensive tackle, number 93, Shaquille Robinson, 6'1", 314, redshirt senior from Jacksonville. And the nose guard is 56, big Denzel Walter, a solid presence on that defensive line. 6'2", 311, the redshirt senior from El Dorado. Linebackers, 35, Jacob Neal, 6'1", 230, junior from Bryant. And number 17, Zach Dixon, 6'1", 210, a senior from Baltimore, Maryland, by way of Pennsylvania's West Liberty University. The nickelback, number three, Randarius Terry, 5'10", 194, the redshirt senior from Crossett. The rover is Tim Jennings, 5'9", 176, a junior from DeSoto, Texas. Free safety, number 12, Kirby Owens, the second, 6'185", redshirt freshman from Little Rock. Your cornerbacks are 21, Josh Doyle, 5'10", 180, a junior from Santa Clarita, California, College of the Canyons transfer. And number 18, Cam Thomas, 5'9", 167, junior from Shreveport, and now a three-year starter in this ready secondary. For the ready offense, looks like this. Left tackle, 61, Robert Dunham, 6'3", 285, a senior from Nashville. Left guard, 64, Blaze Smith, 6'2", 292, redshirt junior from Bryant. Center, 63, Connor Justice, 5'11", 297, redshirt senior from Paragould. The right guard, 53, Bo Stevenson, 6'2", 294, a junior from Conway. And right tackle is 78, Brandon Bishop, 6'6", 309, a junior from North Little Rock. Your receivers, number four, Jalen Abraham, 5'10", 175, junior from Shreveport, Louisiana. Number 14, Chris Hatzis, 5'9", 167 in his fifth season out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number five, Elijah George at the start tonight, 6'2", 174, junior from Baytown, Texas. And the wide receivers slash tight end, 87, Caden Davis, 6'4", 200, redshirt sophomore from Caddo Mills, Texas. He has four big shoes to fill, those of both Aiden Shirley and Mike Benning, both of whom were excellent tight ends during their tenure here in Arkadelphia. You're starting running back number eight, Corian Burrell. The 1,000-yard returner is back for his junior season. He's 5'10", 218. The junior is from Beaumont, Texas. And the quarterback, 15, Andrew Edwards, 6'3", 200, redshirt sophomore from Bentonville. And in his first full season, as a starter after taking over at the midway point of last season. It's exciting to see what these Reddies have to offer this season. Scott Maxfield is the head coach of the Reddies in his 18th season. He is 125 and 62 
overall. He's assisted by Greg Holsworth, Andrew Loudenback, Will Wagner, Dante Collum, Ryan McFadden, Elliot Curry, J.R. Tolleson, Matthew Boyle, Peyton Usher Pearson, and Riley Morales. A good staff for the Reddies this year. And yes, Elliot Curry is on the Reddy staff in his first year as wide receivers coach. We know if we're gonna develop some good receivers, they've got the best to learn from in Elliott. We'll take a break, we'll come back, get you ready for your keys to the game as the Domino's pregame show continues after this on the Henderson State Sports Network. We've invented a new messaging system using the crisp sounds of Bud Light. Crisp code, lesson 86. This is how you say, G Willikers, it's a hot one. Let's cool down with some Bud Lights. And that's it for today. Bud Light. Crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Java Primo, where amazing coffee is just the beginning. Visit Java Primo Coffee House, Cafe, and more on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia, on Central Avenue in Hot Springs, and on the Square in Magnolia. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, gifts, or desserts, Java Primo has something amazing for everyone. Shop for gifts and gift cards for your favorite ready online 24-7 at javaprimo.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Fruitopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs. Stop by the Ready Bookstore, located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game, you can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore, or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of Henderson State Athletics. Henderson State Sports is brought to you on the Arkansas Rocks Radio Network. KDEL 100.9 FM and KVRC 1340 AM, Arkadelphia. KZYP 1310 AM and K281CK 104.1 Malvern. KWPS 99.7 FM, Cattle Valley Hot Springs. And KYXK 106.9 FM, Gurdon. Back here with you on the Domino's pregame show, just over eight minutes from kickoff, the captains are going to start making their way to the field as the officials make their way on. Tonight's GAC crew is chiefed by White Hat Frank Wittenberg. The umpire is Peter Kirsch, linesman Brett Hilton, side judge Lindsey Smith, back judge Chris Hewn, line judge Lorenzo Kelly, and field judge Sean Austin. A newer crew here assigned by the GAC. I think they'll be do a solid job. GAC does a very good job of hiring officials, and it helps when your commissioner is an official himself so he can help be there as well. It is time now for our Southwest Auto Collection Keys to Ready Victory, offering the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. Pick up your keys to a new vehicle today at the Southwest Auto Collection on 10th Street in Arkadelphia or online at idriveswa.com. Pretty simple in my mind for the Reddies today. We've got to feel each other out, obviously. So the first drive or two might be a matter of just seeing what you have. You've only had a limited number of scrimmages before. And now you get the opportunity to play somebody in different colored jerseys and represent a different school than you do. So first for the Reddies, you want to get off to a fast start. All successful Ready teams over the last decade plus have had great offenses that get off to fast starts. And that really starts with either a first drive touchdown if they get the ball or force a three and out or force a turnover, give themselves good field position and really win that battle and set themselves up for success down the road. Defensively, you've got to fly to the football. There's a lot of talk about how good this front seven is for the ready defense. 
Now it's time for them to prove it to all the fans tonight by just getting to the football. If it's a run play, you've got to have 11 hats going at that guy. If you've the coverage in the secondary, if you've got linebackers dropping into coverage, they've got to be solid. They've got to disguise some coverages a little bit. You know, your scrimmages do get shared usually with the opponent for the upcoming week, and you're not really sure exactly how that's going to translate to a game. And some coaches trying to play games with those scrimmages just to get their opponents off kilter. But you, if you fly to the football, there's nothing that's going to happen negatively there. And number three, stay away from distractions. You know, last year this was a loss for the Reddies on the road in Ada on a dreary day where just nothing could go right. We've got to be able to change those opportunities. You've got to create your own opportunities here. If you count to a fast start, that's going to create a lot more problems for the other team than it does for Mike you. Check. And we will see referees Mike check there, Frank Wittenberg, seeing the captains come out. A little bit different uniform than a traditional matchup here. The Reddy's actually going to go in their road white uniforms with red letters and numbers, the red helmets with white and gray letters on either side, red pants. East Central is going with their black jerseys, helmets, and pants that they usually wear in home contests with an orange tiger logo on either side. So a couple of little supply chain issues for both sides trying to get their new jerseys in. We'll have an opportunity to see these new ready jerseys and possibly have those new home jerseys for our next home game, which will be in a couple of weeks. We'll break down the ready schedule for those of you who have not seen it yet, other than obviously this this game against East Central. Next Saturday, we head to Durant, Oklahoma. We will be on the road at Southeastern. Then we'll be at Arkansas Tech in back-to-back -back weeks. Return home on September the 23rd to host Harding in what could be the big matchup of the season, as it often is, before heading on the road to finish out September at Oklahoma Baptist. Back-to-back -back home games to kick off October for the Ready. Southern Nazarene and Southern Arkansas come to town for the Ready's head to UAM on October the 21st. Return home for Northwestern Oklahoma State and finish the game, finish the season with back-to-back -back road trips. They go to Southwestern Oklahoma before finishing the season at Washita. And that game, of course, scheduled for one o'clock tip-offs. The next three weeks will have six o'clock kicks. The Oklahoma Baptist game will have a seven o'clock. Then we go into two o'clock for the entirety of October in the first weekend of November before rivalry weekend. We'll have that one o'clock kickoff. Captains for the Reddies, Randarius Terry out there, along with Chris Hatsis to represent the red and gray. East Central has a whole host of captains. We'll try to get you all of them. Number one, Devon Roush is down there. 55, Jonathan Housley. And 33, Kayvon Curry, along with number six, Treyer Edwards, the captain. Number four, Dior Scott. Number 79, Colby Thomas. And number 97, Yeme Oyasanya will be back at the numbers as they are the extra. You can only take, you can take a maximum of seven captain, captain of four captains to the 50 yard line. Ready to choose to take two. You can take as many as four or as few as one. Anybody else has to stay at the numbers. A couple of changes this year rules-wise. East Central is a visiting team. You make the call. As GAC logo is heads. For the coin Players or tails? Tails, heads. What's your call? Tails is the call. It is tails. You defer. You can take the ball. Which way do you want to go? Kick the scoreboard. Swing around here. Interstate on the side. East Central has won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. Will kick from the south end zone. Good luck, gentlemen. So the Reddies will get the football first. Moving from the north to the south end zone from our broadcast left to right here in this first quarter. The most exciting time of the year. Everybody's record is unblemished. There's a lot of excitement and opportunity to have a very successful season. These new Ready Road jerseys have two parallel stripes on either shoulder. 
down on the arm side as opposed to the top side. Ready to make their way out of the south end zone. The Reddies, a good crowd for a Thursday night. High school game in Hot Springs is the high school game of the week. Badgers take on Hot Springs as the Reddies make their way onto the field from the south end zone. To a nice ovation from the home crowd who has got to be glad that football is back in Arkadelphia as am I, and I know you are too. We appreciate you joining us here on this beautiful Thursday night in Arkadelphia as we get ready for the first ready football in over nine months. Reddies will be receiving here. Again, going from our left to right, they are down there as the field has been cast entirely in shade. The sun has gone behind those tall pine trees back and to our left. Just a little touch of sun shining. Correction, the East Central will kick from the south end zone, from the north end zone. And so they're going to go ahead and change directions. It makes more sense considering East Central is going to want to go toward the scoreboard so they know how much time will be left as the second quarter comes around. Dynamic kick returner in Jody Easter last year really made his mark. The now sophomore, former McGee Owl, sure will be a anchor of that kick return unit. They had to go opposite directions. They are ready to receive in the north end zone, and now they got to go all the way across and go down to the south. A couple changes in the rules this year in terms of clock. You know, the clock traditionally stops on first downs. That's not going to be the case anymore. There might be a brief pause before the White Hat winds the clock, but that clock is going to run until the last two minutes of either half. That clock will stop. So it's a lot more like traditional NFL rules. They're trying to make the game on Saturdays, or in this case Thursday, look like Sunday. Jody Easter goes back to receive, as does Jalen Abraham. They are the deep backs. Cameron Gallagher back there, along with Eric Thibodeau and A.J. Zarate on that second line, ready to set the blocks for the Reddies. Tommy Yusi, a 5'7 freshman from Hera, Oklahoma, gets ready to kick this one off. He will be kicking from the 35-yard line in the north end zone, moving from our left to right. Take his time to get ready. Easter and Abraham both stand on their own five-yard line. Teams are ready, and it's football time in Arkadelphia. This kick is underway. It'll be received by Easter at the 11-yard line. He'll go right at the middle of the field, crosses over, spins off a couple of tacklers, and makes his way all the way up to the ready 29-yard line, where it will be first and 10. That kickoff brought to you by Chicken Express, home of the legendary Express Tenders and Chicken East Sweet Tea, located at 3115 Pine Street in Arkadelphia. Chicken Express is a proud supporter of Ready Athletics. First time we'll get a chance to look at the Henderson State offense. Andrew Edwards, Corey and Burrell will come out in the backfield. They'll split three receivers wide. Ball's right in the middle of the field. Edwards in the shotgun. First and 10 for the Reddies. First play from scrimmage. Hand off to Burrell right up the middle. He will get pushed forward and get five yards out of it, all the way up to the 34-yard line. Just a straight-up split zone. And let Burrell establish early and keep the Reddies on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. I mean, second down and five here for the Reddies. So on the shotgun, twins to either side. Five-step drop going deep. Left side wants a man over through Dawson Brown. Senior from Kennesaw, Georgia. And a third down and five, a little bit behind schedule now. You want to average at least two, three yards of play to put yourself in manageable situations. And that ball just a little too much for Brown to go up and get. Elijah George, no, excuse me, Martinez Hill in the coverage for East Central. Bunch tight here. Edwards going to check down to Burrell. He spins off a tackler. He's going to get a yard, and there's a flag in the backfield. That might be a roughing penalty. Way back there at the 24. 
Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 51 of the defense, 15 yards added into the run, first down. So a somewhat ineffective check down pass, ends up at 15 yards and an automatic first. Andrew Edwards got roughed on the play. Reddy's hustled to the line, and the clock will wind. Trips to the right side, it's the wide side of the field. Brown, the only man to the left side, as the Reddies will look to the near sideline to get the play call in. And as you heard a couple times in the pregame, Andrew Loudon back now taking over play calling duties, the offensive coordinator. He'll call a handoff to Burrell on first down. He's across midfield, gets five yards again. Pretty steady up to the East Central 46-yard line. And either way, the Reddies are getting yards consistently on first down. And it's just simple running the football. You're not going to ask for a lot more than that. They'll go with two-by-two two receivers. Ball still on the left hash. Brown and Abraham to the near side. Pump fake, Edwards steps up in the pocket, loses the football. It's picked up by Burrell in the backfield, and he is hit hard back at the East Central 49-yard line. A broken play, and the Reddies are fortunate to come away with that football. And now they're faced with a third down and nine in what is likely four down territory. Balls on the right hash now. Trips are to the near side of the field, but they're all bunched up at the hash. It's one of a triangle formation. Play action. Edwards steps up, throws out to the left side. It is complete to Chris Hatzis at the 39-yard line. Just enough for a ready first down. Great job by Hatzis knowing where the chains are and getting to them. And there you get to hear Troy Mitchell on the PA my oftentimes broadcast partner and all-time friend who's taken back over on the PA duties for Ready Home Games this season. First down and 10 from the East Central 39. Hand off to Burrell on first down. Goes off right tackle. It's all the way up to the 35-yard line. Hole's not quite big enough developing yet for Burrell to show that burst of speed. Still a solid gain on first down. He's second down and four. He's averaging still about almost five yards a carry. Three receivers set. Davis will be in there as the tight end. On the right-hand side, handoff again to Burrell. Off right tackle again, hit, falls forward to the 29-yard line. It should be enough for a first down. And it is, and they'll give it to him. Good solid runs for Burrell. Once those holes start to open up quicker, Burrell's going to be able to show that burst of speed. And coming in next drive, he may be the he may be the bell cow here. Reddy's, as Coach Scott Maxfield said, feel comfortable with four different running backs. Burrell off right guard this time across the 25. Pile pushed up to the 24-yard line. Another good gain, five yards on first down again for Burrell. If he can keep this up, be in great shape as he'll actually come to the sideline for a break. And Jaquarian Turner, junior from Garland, Texas, will come in as the running back. And he'll switch to the right side of Edwards, opposite, handoff. He'll get it right up the middle, Will Turner. And he will be stopped after a two-yard gain. It will be third down and three. It's third and manageable. As the Reddies look to get the play in quick. 10-18 left here in this first quarter of play. No score. Reddies still on their opening drive. Have been able to get the ball down the field after a first tough series that was bailed out. By a roughing the passer penalty. Edwards calls for the fake snap. Now looks to the near sideline as the play clock is at six seconds and now five. Got to hurry and get the playoff. He does in time, but the Reddies are going to take time out before that. Timeout, Henderson State. That's the first of the half. And we will keep it right here. 
As the Reddies take their first time out of half, it'll just be a 30 second timeout. They may lengthen it with the heat. What's that? An opportunity there. A couple of very interesting games already as all six games are now underway. Surprising in multiple ways in terms of high scoring and low scoring. We'll keep you updated on those a little bit later in the half and, of course, at halftime as the Reddies had to stop the clock. 9.53 is where the clock is stopped. It'll be third down and three from the Reddy 22-yard line. Make their way back out onto the field. Second year of this newly installed Geo Services field. It's been very well taken care of. East Central looking to bring at least six guys. They've got two of their linebackers, now three of their linebackers, stepping up and showing blitz. Fakes the handoff. Edwards loses the ball, gets it right back, but he will lose a couple of yards. The second bobbled exchange of the game, and the Reddies will send out the field goal unit. Colby King will be attempting the field goal, the 6'3 junior from Houston, Texas. This will be from 41 yards. The Apondo, the snap, Axel Robinson, the hold, it's bobbled again. King has to flip it forward to Robinson, and he's going to be brought down at the 36-yard line, and there's a flag that comes in after. It's going to be after the play, though, so East Central is going to take over on downs as we go to Frank Wittenberg after a little bit of a discussion. The result of the play is a turnover on downs. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 99 of East Central, taunting. That is his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So East Central will take the ball over. That was after the play. Mike Aram, number 99, charged with that unsportsmanlike penalty. The ready offense stalls out in plus territory. Not the way the Reddies wanted this ball game to start as they killed nearly six minutes off the clock but have nothing left to show for it and have burnt a timeout. So on the 21-yard line, the Tigers will take over. Treyer Edwards is the quarterback. He will line up in the pistol with a fullback, and now Miles Davis steps up to his right-hand side. They'll hand it off, read option. No, Edwards keeps it, and he is swallowed up quickly by Zach Dixon and Jacob Neal after a one-yard gain. They're trying to go that little read option out of what eventually became the shotgun. Started off out of the pistol, and then Davis stepped up to the right side. Now it's a pistol split T. A tight end running back flanking. Now, Dior Scott goes in motion. The handoff to Davis, right up the middle, nowhere to go. He bounces outside. He's got the first down and more across the 40, tiptoeing and out of bounds, eventually in Henderson State territory, all the way down to the ready 46-yard line. A big gain there for Davis on what could have been a busted play. He ran right into the heart of the ready defensive line, but found a lane and bounced to the outside. Tigers going quick, first and 10. Shotgun snap, handoff Davis, goes outside of the right now. Breaks one tackle, but can't break off the rest. Leading the way in there, Josh Doyle in on the tackle. Looked like Tyler Strain got there as well. Kirby Owens will get credit for half a tackle there. And it'll be second down and eight after a two yard gain. Three receiver set with a tight end. in the shotgun. Seven step drop, steps up, now tucks it, looking to run, being pursued. He's gonna get to the pylon and then get out of bounds. He's got the first down at the 34 yard line. The only successful plays they've had on this drive are plays that have broken down 
downfield or in a handoff coverage. And the Tigers have taken advantage. First and 10 from the ready 34-yard line. Trips out to the right. Davis stands to Edwards' left. That's the short side of the field. Now we'll go in motion. Looks for the screen. They'll check it down to Davis. Setting up some blocks downfield. He gets across the 30 and out of bounds, but there is a flag on the play. It looked like a hold on one of the receivers on the outside. Looked like C.J. Moore, number 35. Looks like we're going to be moving this one back. Holding number two of the offense. Ten yards to spot a foul. Still first down. And that's Isaiah Wilhoyt, senior receiver. And they'll replay first down. They get first and 16. And ready defense. It's an opportunity. The story of their first offensive drive has been bobbled snaps. Two bad exchanges to Edwards and then the Attempt on the field goal just never did bounce. King had to pick it up and fling it ahead to Axel Robertson. Out of the pistol, here's Edwards. One-on-one -on -one coverage downfield. He's got a man caught in stride. Touchdown East Central, C.J. Moore. Just whipped around the outside and took advantage on Cam Thomas. It's a little inside move. And the Tigers strike first. UC will come on to attempt the extra point. Reese Connor, the punter, will handle the holding duties. Jonathan Housley, the long snapper. That drive did not even take two minutes. That snap is bobbled as well. It's a free play. The ball is going to be picked up by nobody. East Central finally falls on it. There is a flag. I have a feeling this one's going to be a free play. It looked like the Reddies jumped on that far side of the field. The flag was thrown in the offense's direction. That they're looking to mark the ball up. That's four bad snaps we've seen. Encroachment on the receiving team. It's a it's replay to try. So they'll get another chance at it the exchange, if nothing else. So the Tigers take a minute and 30 seconds off the clock for a big touchdown reception. That snap is a little high. The hold gets down, kick is up, and it is good. 7.41 left to play in our opening quarter. And we are going to take a timeout with the we score. Timeout. East Central 7, Reddy's nothing. This is Reddy Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. We offer the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer who will give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia, or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. Sodexo would like to invite you to a new dining experience on the beautiful campus of Henderson State University. Come dine with us in our new dining hall or retail locations, including Starbucks, perfect for your break times. Grab a quick lunch at Chick-fil-A, where it's always a pleasure to serve you, and check out the all-new Ready Grill. Fresh ingredients made to order and certain to put you in that ready spirit. Sodexo, encouraging you to eat well, live ready. Blake Smith back here with you. Ready's now trail 7-0, getting ready to get the football back. The first offensive drive marred by bad exchanges. The Central takes a minute and a half on their drive. Let's see how long that drive ended up being for the Tigers. UC will line up and get ready to kick it away. Yeah. 
Abraham and Easter will be back for the Reddies. You see, will approach. This play clock is about to expire. I've never seen a delay of game on a kickoff. A high and short kick fielded by Easter at the 11-yard line on the right-hand side. He wants to get to the outside, does so, has an angle, stiff arms a man out of bounds, and there comes a flag in late. Out of bounds to the 30-yard line. What is the penalty? Easter just stiff-armed. During a return, personal foul, face mask, number five of the kicking team. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Martinez Hill will get charged. He was the one who was stiff-armed, but trying to reach back and got a handful of Jody Easter's mask. So another really good starting field position for the Reddies. Significantly better than their last drive. Starts at the 45-yard line. Burrell back in the backfield alongside Andrew Edwards. He's on Edwards' right-hand side and will get the call on first down. Bounces to the outside, has some space across midfield and knocked out of bounds at the East Central 46-yard line and sprints back to the sideline to get the ball to the umpire. The Reddies want to go fast. The clock rolling inside seven and a half minutes left in the opening quarter. That East Central drive, six plays, 64 yards for a minute and a half of clock time. Four receivers, trips are to the wide side of the field for the Reddies on second down and one. And off again, KB wants to bounce, cuts back inside across the 45 and down to the 43 yard line. And that will be enough for a ready first down, a gain of three yards on the play. Full substitutions on both sides. Once the ready sub, East Central does, does have the ability to sub freely without having to sprint on and off the field. Timion Jackson goes in motion right to left across the formation. And he's a slot receiver on the left side. Edwards looking to that left side. Now will tuck it and run to the right side and slides down across the 40 and down to the 39-yard line for a gain of four yards on first down. Ready receiver's got to create some separation downfield as Edwards is having to get rid of that ball very quickly. Second down and six from the East Central 39-yard line. Taquarian Turner back into the running back position. He gets the call, tries to go off left guard, immediately runs into Darian Williams of the Tigers defensive line, but does get two yards. Ready running backs, we talked about this a lot last season as well, are really, really adept at continuing to drive forward and get extra yards even in situations where it looks like nothing good can come of it. Third down and four from the 37. Four receivers, trips to the wide side again. Edwards looking to throw. East Central shows blitz. Edwards does a great job getting out of it, looking, little dump pass complete, just barely. Jaquarian Turner, the safety valve, released upfield. Edwards didn't deliver a great ball, but Turner was able to get back to it and to turn his body and move to the inside and got it all the way down to the 22 yard line of the Tigers for another ready first down almost inside the red zone. Three receivers and a tight end in this formation. 11 personnel. Play fake. Going deep. Going to the back corner of the end zone. It's incomplete. A lot of contact. Looking for Jody Easter. And nothing was there. That was really good coverage by, I believe, Geo Waller. Make a second down and 10. You get your shot play on first down. See if they can make something happen here on second to give themselves third and manageable. Davis, not sure which side of the formation to be on. He's split out left now in the slot. He's looked to the sideline, get the play call. Play clock's down to five seconds, got to hurry. Now stepping up, gets a snap off, no. Is there going to be a 
Before the snap, timeout, number eight of Henderson State. That's our second of the half. So Corey and Burrell didn't think they were going to get the playoff in time, and the Reddies have used their second timeout of the half already at the 445 mark of the first quarter. And the score is East Central 7, Reddies nothing. While we have a second, let's give you a Southwest Sporting Goods GAC scoreboard update. Two games have reached halftime. Both games involving a couple of predictions of ours. Harding all over Southern Nazarene at the end of the first half. It's 35-0 for the Bisons. One passing touchdown and four rushing touchdowns. Blake Dela Cruz, nine carries for 31 yards and four touchdowns out of that fullback position. Also a halftime score down in Magnolia. This one's a tough one. 17-16, Southern Arkansas over Southeastern Oklahoma. Back into play, pass complete inside the 10 yard line to Timion Jackson who held the ball down after being hit hard by Kayvon Curry and the Reddies have it first and goal from the seven yard line. Reddies got out of that time out a little quicker and we're ready to play. Two receivers, handoff instead goes to Burrell, not looking in the right spot, gets down to the five, nothing more. It looked from this angle like there was more room to go off the right side, but Burrell was wanting to go off left guard, wanted to go inside the B gap. And it just, that hole just closed a lot quicker than it should have. Second down and goal, Reddy's from the five, inside four minutes to play in the half. Edwards will flip his receivers. Now Easter goes in motion, goes back out. Edwards rolling to the right side, looking, had Easter but didn't have him in time, now will throw it away. Now stop the clock, third and goal from the five at the 329 mark. Clock won't roll there, at least not right now. It may later in the game or it may change as the rules start to get seen and put into a little more practice. The officials get some better ideas of exactly what they want the rule to be. Trips right out of the four receiver set. Edwards looking right side in trouble. Tucks and runs inside the five and hit hard down to the two yard line. Now will the Reddies go for it? They will not. They will try to go for the guaranteed points to give Colby King another opportunity. This time one to actually kick a field goal. will be a 19-yard field goal for King from the left hash. That snap is clean. Robertson's hold. Good King up and good. The Reddies get on the board for the first time this season at the 253 mark here of quarter number one. The new score, East Central 7, Reddies 3. We'll step aside for this timeout and be back with more Reddy football after this on the Henderson State Sports Network. SCM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for over 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student, Best Residence Hall. This year, SCM Architects have been privileged to work on the new Charles and Anita Cave Student Athlete Success Center and the restoration of the historic Captain Henderson House. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial interior design, historic preservation, and master planning project at scmarchitects.com. Subway restaurants are known for our sandwich artists, but our customers are the real creative geniuses. I like turkey breast, mustard, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and onions. I'll take the Italian BMT, make it deluxe with 50% more meat, and add provolone and bacon. How about rotisserie style chicken, chipotle southwest sauce, spinach, and green peppers? With our freshly baked breads, your choice of proteins, and an array of crisp veggies, you can create your own masterpiece. What combo will you make today? Let your creative genius shine at Subway. 
2.53 left here in quarter number one in Arkadelphia. Reddy's Trail East Central by a score of 7-3. to three. They'll be ready to kick it away for the first time this new season. Colby King will handle Oh, excuse me. Axel Robertson, the holder and punter, will handle the kickoff duty. So a little split kicker action never hurt anybody. And we'll see what Axel has. A six-foot junior from Katy, Texas. Back deep for East Central's number four, Dior Scott. And I believe Miles Davis back there as well, number zero. Robertson's kick high, end over end, inside the 10-yard line, fielded by Davis at the 6-yard line. Tries to bust the outside, and he runs into a host of readies. Darian Thompson leading the way. The senior from Prescott stopped all the way the 21-yard line. There is a flag on the play, it looks like. They'll move it up. Normally in that spot, it's going to be a Offensive During the return, number 17, holding of the receiving team. Ten yards from the end of the play, first down. So that'll back the Tigers up deep in their own territory and give the ready defense a chance to make a stand here. I'm sure Cam Thomas wants another chance on that same route. From the near side, he gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup with C.J. Moore. Moore, a big possession receiver, 6'4", 193. And as he showed on that last drive, very quick. Edwards will be in the pistol, Davis behind. Need the snap, the handoff to Davis. Right off left guard, bounce, no, it's Edwards on the keeper. He did a great job hiding that ball, but not from the ready defense. He was brought down for a loss on the play. Looked like Jacob Neal was in on that one. That was Kirby Owens, the second. We've heard his name a couple times. Kirby Owens looking to some up. Freshman from Joe T. Robinson High School in West Little Rock. Out of the shotgun, now Davis will go out of the backfield. Back behind the line of scrimmage, Edwards looking to throw. He's in trouble, and he's brought down the end zone, and we've got us a ready safety. No, they gave him progress to the one. We'll get an explanation. No, we won't. They gave him forward progress at the one yard line, and now it's third down and 19. Edwards under center in a tight formation, just trying to get out of the shadow of the goalposts. He'll be stopped. Not hardly any room, maybe got a half a yard there. And it'll be fourth down and long and the ready defense came to play on that one, forcing a three and out. Negative yardage for the Tigers there. Devin Adams will go back, stand around the, the East Central 45 yard line. The red shirt junior from Pocahontas. Harn will punt with his left heel on the back line of the end zone. It's the snap. The lefty punts it away. It's a high, wobbly kick. Adams fields it at the 45-yard line and has a chance for a return. A nice return for Devin Adams. He's inside the 2015-10 and is knocked out of bounds inside the five, inside the 10, out of the six-yard line, they'll say. A 39-yard return for Devin Adams, and the Reddies have it first and goal and are in business. If you're the Reddy offense, you've got to love that. 39 seconds left here in the quarter. Reddies trail 7-3, but that could change very quickly. Edwards in the shotgun with Burrell on his left hip. Hatsis goes in motion, now sets up as a slot back. Hand off Burrell, right side, tripped up across the five and down to the four yard line. 
And that clock will run. The Reddies do not have to run another play. The question is, will they or will they not? He's rushing to their spots as if they will. The clock is at 15 seconds and now 14. Trips stacked inside the boundary. Handoff Burrell tries to go left side. He is stuffed. Nothing doing there. No gain at the five yard line. And it'll stop play. A helmet came off. The helmet of Darian Williams. Of the that is the end of the first quarter. We have reached the end of the first quarter with the score East Central 7, Reddies 3. The Reddies are right on the doorstep of the end zone. We'll see what their third and five play is and if they can get into the end zone for the first time this season after this timeout. This is Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. At Southern Bank Corp, we are wealth builders for everyone. We see building wealth as helping people succeed and creating strong financial futures. For some, it's having tools to build credit and buy a first home. For others, working with our award-winning SBA team to launch or grow a small business. And still others might use our unique savings plan today to save for tomorrow's dreams. Wherever you are in your wealth building journey, Southern Bank Corp can help. Stop by or visit banksouthern.com to get started. Proud supporter of the Henderson Reddies. Southern Bank Corp, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We know you'd rather not be listening to an ad, but if you have to, a mini ad is better. Maybe even a Pepsi mini ad. Still all the flavor of the full size ready. Just mini ad. Pepsi minis. That's what I like. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Printmania can help you turn your idea into reality. Printmania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Printmania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Philadelphia. Call 870-246-3803. Printmania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Second quarter of action here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. Geo Services Field in Arkadelphia. Blake Smith here with you. Ready's trail seven to three. Have a third down and five. Andrew Edwards, three-step drop going for the end zone. Has a man, has Chris Hutz's touchdown Ready's. First touchdown of the season, a five-yard strike. Andrew Edwards to Chris Hatzis, and the Reddies take their first lead, 9-7. Great job by Edwards to step up in the pocket under some heavy pressure. Hatzis will now hold the extra point attempt. Clean snap, hold. Colby King's kick is up, and it is good. 14-51 left to play in the first half of play. New score, Reddy's 10, Tigers 7. We'll be back after this timeout. You're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Hey, future Reddies. Are you interested in a career in business? Henderson State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy, all working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. Reddies take no time at all. Three plays, six yards, 48 seconds. The five-yard touchdown pass from Andrew Edwards to Chris Hatzis and have taken their first lead of the season on their first touchdown, leading East Central here 10-7. Nine seconds in to quarter number two. And now Axel Robertson will tee it up and be ready to kick it away. Davis and Scott will go back for East Central. It was a very good job in kick coverage 
by the Reddies on their previous kickoff. Kick is high, end over end, a little short. Davis will field it at the 10 yard line and he'll start working his way up the left hand side. Bounces to the edge across the 25. Flags come in on the weak side, out of bounds at the 30, you know, the 40 yard line. Flags on the near side as well. Lots of laundry on the field and we'll sort this one out. They may be offsetting penalties. They have a hold on the far side and a face mask on the near side. During the return, there are two fouls by the return team. Holding, number 24, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 17. That penalty will be enforced, will be first and 10 for East, Car East Central. So a blindside block, that one on the far side. Your kick coverage man was looking at the ball carrier. One of the up backs came and got him across when he wasn't looking, didn't have a chance to react, and that's a 15-yarder. So that's gonna take the ball all the way back to the 14-yard line. And East Central will have it first and 10. There may be some, there may be some question, oh, they're gonna set it on the other side. Just inside the right hash. And it'll be first down and 10 for East Central, their first possession moving from our broadcast right to left. Four games now at half across the GAC. We'll update those on our SCM Architects halftime show. Edward sends a man in motion, fakes the little pop pass and hands off instead to Davis of the right side, got right at a yard up to the 17. Now the 18-yard line. Now they'll mark him back to the 17. Gain of one here, second down and nine. Jordan Owens, the first white jersey there. And Davis goes out of the backfield, leaving Edwards all alone. He's looking to the right side, finds his check down man. That's complete, but swallowed up right away. Fred Lewis makes a quick tackle and limits Dior Scott to a one-yard reception. Now third down and eight after back-to-back one-yard receptions. One-yard plays for the Tigers, rather. Twins to either side. Davis will stand to Edwards' right side out of the shotgun. Edwards a bit of a low snap, looking right. Fires to the right side, complete. Got the first down and a little bit more. Quickly brought down by Cam Thomas. And that again is C.J. Moore. That big possession receiver, and he's got several inches on Cam Thomas. He's got about seven inches on Cam. It's going to be tough to overcome. So he's have a big possession receiver. Ready, showing blitz here, and they bring the house quickly, but gets it away, does Edwards, and it is complete again to Moore. Thomas was playing off him that time and allowed the short pickup, pickup of right at five yards. Second down and five here. Same formation. Twins to both sides. Edwards three-step drop. Wants to step up in the pocket. Delivers over the middle. There's more again. Complete into ready territory. Wrapped up and brought down finally at the 40-yard line by a host of readies at the 39, rather. Brady's going to make some wholesale changes. He's got to hurry and get guys in position. Tigers want to go quick, and they do. And they're going to get a free play here. Screen pass complete off the right side to Moore. And the Reddies are going to have an illegal substitution penalty here. They had 12 on the field at the time of the snap. Right. Illegal substitution. Defense, more than 11 players on the field at the snap. Five-yard penalty, it's still first down. So the Reddies unable to get a player off the field, a 12th player off the field, and so unable to be 
overly successful on that play either. And the Tigers have found the ready weak spot. It's just to find C.J. Moore. I believe he is off the field. Take advantage of this ready secondary. First down and five now. Option, speed option to the left side. The pitch to Davis, and he's hit hard. Set up by Tim Jennings and brought down hard by Zach Dixon. A no gain on the play, actually. It'll be second down and five, so the Reddies minimize the damage from that first down penalty. Set up at second down and five. Empty backfield for Treyer Edwards. Five receivers, two to the short side as they'll check for the play call from the far sideline this time. Will Edwards. He's showing some pressure up front. They'll bring six in pursuit. Edwards bailing out to the right, throws it out of bounds. Good job knocking down that pass by, looks like Darian Thompson over there. Might have been Josh Doyle instead. Jacob Neal on a nice quarterback hurry, and now it's going to be third down and five. Still 11-27 left to play in the second quarter. The Reddies lead 10-7 after a bit of a slow start offensively. Defense has had their moments. And also allowed C.J. Moore of the Tigers to have some of his own moments. Shotgun snap, five-step drop. Edwards hurried, throws over the middle, complete right at the stick. Dior Scott is going to get it. An extra effort and a little help from the pile will push him forward to the 28-yard line. And they get just enough, six when they needed five. Another Tiger first down as the clock rolls inside 11 minutes here in quarter number two. First down and 10. Three receivers and a tight end. Edwards takes the snap. Three step drop, steps up, fires over the middle, but Moore was not there. It's incomplete. Threw it over the head of Scott. Moore was on a deep post, but he hadn't gotten to the spot yet. Edwards just led him too far for where he was at the time. Second down and 10, the clock will stop at 10.42. Even with all these new rules, the clock will still stop on incomplete passes. They will not, they will not stop, but for a split second on live plays that go out of bounds. Receivers stepping out, running backs stepping out. And let's see inside that two minute we talked about, Davis. Shuffles his feet, tries to get to the outside. Great job setting an edge, and great job finishing. And there's a flag that comes in after the play, and Strain's going to get hit with a late hit out of bounds. Davis a little slow to get up, but it was going to be third down, and now the Reddies' penalties are going to hurt him. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 40 of the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Correction, it'll be half the distance, automatic first down. And that'll get it down to the 14-yard line or so. We'll call it the 14. First and 10 for the Tigers. Another trip inside the red zone. Actually, their first trip inside the red zone as it was a long pass play to Moore for the touchdown earlier. New running back in the game. Playing with number 32, Jake Tuttle. Free play, going to the end zone, almost caught. What an effort there by Kylan Mathis. It was knocked down, I believe, by Tim Jennings. Offsides, number 92 of the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So some early mistakes on both sides. Javante Sims with that one. We'll give a five-yard penalty, and they'll replay the down. Ball set 10-yard line, first down and five. On that option again, the pitch is out to Tuttle. On the option, he will get brought down at the eight-yard line after a two-yard gain. 
Ray's got to be prepared for that. That little speed option to either side of the running back as Davis comes back into the game. Tigers taking their time, taking every bit of that 40 second clock that they can. They do get the ball back to start the second half. But there's a lot of time left here in the first. Low snap, Edwards throws to the end zone, batted up in the air and caught by the tight end, Jackson Allen. Touchdown East Central, hit it up in the air to himself and brought it down over Tim Jennings in coverage. Another matchup. Pass interference, number nine of the defense. Penalties decline, result of the play is a touchdown. Didn't even see the flag come in, but another penalty on the Reddies. Even though this one was declined, it's gotta be frustrating. Extra point by you see it's up and it is no good. He pushed it to the right. 9.28 remains in our second quarter of play with the score, East Central 13, Reddy's 10. We'll be back after this with more Reddy football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Subway restaurants are known for our best mustard, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and onions. I'll take the Italian BMT, make it deluxe with 50% more meat, and add provolone and bake. How about it to three style chicken, chipotle southwest sauce, spinach, and green peppers? With our freshly baked breads, your choice of proteins, and an array of crisp veggies, you can create your own masterpiece. What combo will you make today? Let your creative genius shine at Subway. Brookshire's proudly supports the Henderson State Reddies football team. At Brookshire's, you can save on fuel or groceries with your points, where every dollar you spend earns you one point. Plus, score big with meat that is cut fresh daily and enjoy lower prices on the freshest produce. In a hurry? Let us do the shopping for you with our convenient curbside online ordering and pickup. Visit Brookshire's.com to place your order today. Brookshire's, your ultimate tailgating destination. Go Reddies and go Brookshire's. Reddy's trail for the second time today, now down 13 to 10. Some early season jitters, even on both sides of the ball. The Reddy's have some things they obviously want to fix. It's the first game of the season. It's still not even September yet. It's nice to actually get out on the field and be able to do some of these corrections. Abraham and Easter will be back. UC will be back to kick the ball away from our right to left now. The first time as the Reddies will be moving from our left to right. For the remainder of the half, which right now sits at nine minutes and 28 seconds. End over end kick, Easter will field it right about at the seven yard line on the right side and work his way up the field. Big seam and he's tripped up hard and brought down at the 30-yard line by Kevian Davis. At the 30-yard line, no flags there, so we'll go ahead and play first and 10 for the Reddies from the 30-yard line. Edwards will start out with an empty backfield. Three receivers and a tight end to the wide side. It's like Easter's the lone man here at the short side of the field. Now Timmy Owen Jackson will come into the backfield. Maybe a little wheel route. Edwards pump fakes it to him, throws over the middle, but too much, incomplete. Intended for Hatsis. Had Jackson, but there was a defender in the area. Hatsis beat his man, but Edwards just led him too far. Maybe a little bit of first game jitters for the quarterback, who still is a sophomore. You know, he played great. He was just a freshman. There's still some growing room. Handoff this time. Off right tackle goes Corey and Burrell up to the 34-yard line for a four-yard gain. We'll set up third down and six. Gary 
Twins to either side. Burrell on Edwards' right hand inside of nine minutes to play in the half. Now Caden Davis goes in motion right to left. He'll set up in the slot there. Edwards, three-step drop, wants to get rid of it in a hurry. Goes deep down the left side of the field. In stride, caught by Jalen Abraham. What a grab by Abraham all the way down to the East Central 22-yard line. And it's a first down for the Reddies. East Central acting like he didn't make the catch, but from this angle, he pulled it in and did it so beautifully. Reddies right back at it. Burrell on the carry, finds a hole right side and up the middle up to the 15-yard line. A gain of seven and a half on first down. We'll call it second down and three. Three receiver set. Davis of the tight end on the right side. Fakes the handoff. Now goes left side. Timmy on Jackson inside the 10. He's got the first down and more down to the six yard line. First and goal for the Reddies. Jeremiah Davis now in at running back. JD, the bowling ball sophomore from Montalba, Texas. Field at 5'7", 212. Edwards rolls out to the right, looking on a pass, looking on the back corner, wide open. Man, got him in the end zone. Will it hold up? There's a penalty on the field. I have a bad feeling it's coming back. Holding number 78 of the offense, 10 yards from previous spot. Still first down. Brandon Bishop. Gets hit with a holding call from that right tackle position. Negating the touchdown grab of Timmy on Jackson in the back corner of the end zone. That might be that might be Gary Lewis in the backfield. It may be Fred as well. Fakes the handoff to him either way. Edwards wants to go. Has a man. Has Caden Davis, and he dropped it. Had the touchdown grab and just hit him right in the numbers and dropped. And now it'll be second down and goal. Got a pass. Holding number five of the defense. It'll be 10 yards from previous spot. Automatic first down. Another penalty, this time on the Tigers, and this time on Martinez Hill. And that will get the ball back to the six-yard line, and for the third time, we will have first and goal for the Reddies. Much better position than first and goal from almost the 20-yard line. Hand off Burrell up the middle, across the five, not a lot more than that, down to the four-yard line. Devon Roush and Kayvon Curry in on the tackle for East Central. They will mark it at the four where it's second down and goal. Second down and goal, four yard line. Edwards in the shotgun, has Burrell on his left hip. Three receivers right side, he's going the opposite. Back shoulder throw, he brought it in, touchdown Reddies. Great grab by Jalen Abraham and the Reddies are on the board again and they go back on top. King on for the extra point. Clean snap, clean hold. The kick is up and good. 6.34 remains in the first half of play. New score ready 17, East Central 13, and we'll keep it right here. The story of the game so far, it's been a back and forth battle, but penalties have really plagued both sides and made 
it very difficult to get anything going in a smooth manner possession wise it's kind of difficult to accomplish a lot when you're going back and forth getting penalties in your favor and against you I'm sure when we get to halftime we'll talk about those stats as they become official for the half we'll also have scoreboard update Pepsi halftime stats and more on our SCM Architects halftime show. Axel Robinson, Robertson, excuse me, will kick off from the 35. Davis and Scott back around their own five yard line for the Tigers. Oh, it's a high short kick. Fair catch called for and made to the 32-yard line. That was Kevian Davis, a redshirt senior from of all places, Pine Bluff. Maybe the only Arkansas player on the roster. At first glance, he is. Ends up at East Central. 33-yard line where the Tigers will take over first and 10, 6.34 left to play in the second quarter. It's an empty backfield for Trey Edwards. He's got all five receivers out to the right side. This usually means screen or a quarterback draw, and Denzel Walter will have none of that. Just swallowed his matchup up front and the big man from El Dorado has a nice three yard loss on the play. Not technically a sack considering Edwards was a runner, but sending those five receivers off to the right side was not a distraction for the ready defense, especially up front. Edwards Gets the snap over the middle, complete to Dior Scott right at the stick. They'll see where they mark him. Should mark him at the 42 yard line. It's a yard short, third down and one. Scott and Moore seem to be the go to receivers for the Tigers. Now Davis goes out of the backfield. Neal's going to cover him. And it looks like the Tigers are going to take a timeout. Timeout, East Central. That's the first of the half. 5.33 left in the first half. Reddy's lead at 17 to 13. Uh, East Central has used their first timeout of the half. Reddy's lead at 17-13. Third down and one coming out of the timeout. Reddies haven't seemed to have been bit by the timeout bug just yet. They did have to burn two on their first offensive drive. Have not had to use that other one and may have it, should have it when they get the ball back on offense should that happen before anything else. Reddy's four penalties for 25 yards. East Central six penalties for 75 yards so far. Third down and one. Reddy's in a dime package defensively. Three defensive linemen, two linebackers, and six defensive backs. And now Zach Dixon goes out in coverage. Edwards rolls out to the right, checks over the middle, just past the outstretched arm of Dixon and into the hands of Jackson Allen, the tight end. And the Tigers have the first down from their own 49-yard line. Twins to either side. Now Davis goes in motion to the short side of the field. He's the safety valve. Edwards tucks, has a lot of field ahead of him. Now finally tuck it and run. And we'll 
slide slash stumble down to the ready 45 after a six yard gain. Denzel Walter hobbling off the field, maybe a little tender on that ankle. Give the adrenaline time and he'll get caught back up. Play action on second down. Edwards has to roll out of the pocket. Strain in pursuit. Throws it to the stick. Complete to Davis, who catches it and then goes out of bounds. But he is short of the line to gain. Down to the ready 43-yard line. He'll make it the 42-yard line, where it's third down and one again. Rolling around Darius Terry gets credited for the tackle for the Reddies. 4-11 left in the half. Reddies lead at 17-13. Oh, and got the Reddies to jump again. Free play. Edwards going to air it out, and that's way past Moore. But the Reddies jumped again the left side of that defensive line. They'll end up another first down. All size, the 40 of the defense. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. It's another penalty on Tyler Strain. And it will put the ball at the 36-yard line. First and 10. Twin receivers to either side. Balls on the right hash as the Tigers move from our right to left. Hand off to Davis on first down. Waits and finds a hole. And gets tackled by Jacob Neal. Brian Hampton might have been in there as well. If I'm, no, excuse me, that was Trent Moore. In there. Shaq Robinson comes off the field. In that defensive line. He's in a three front here. Low snap, quick screen pass out to the boundary to Dior Scott. He'll be wrapped up but not brought down, and he gets his way out of bounds to the 33-yard line. Sets up third down, and we'll call it six. the shotgun. Ball on the left hash. Tigers look to the sideline. Snap the handoff to Davis. Jukes pass one man. Spins. Gets his way to the 30, but it's nowhere close. He's he stopped at the 30-yard line. Three yards short of the line to gain, which will make it fourth down and leaves the Tigers with a decision. Sits in the pocket, throws it away on fourth down. What on earth was he thinking? I think there's a miscommunication between him and Allen, his intended receiver, and the Reddies will get it turned over on downs. So the Reddies will have a chance to get some more points on the board going into the half. They lead at 17-13 with 2.09 to play. It will be first and 10. Reddies on their own 30-yard line. With one timeout remaining. Edwards in the shotgun. Trips to the wide side of the field. The handoff goes instead to Jaquarian Turner. He'll be brought down to the 34-yard line. Reddy's want to move relatively quick. Now that we're inside of two minutes, though, the ball will, the clock rather, will stop on first down, and there's a Tiger down. And it's Devon Roush. It looks like he's... Time out for an injury. Looks like a cramp. So they will 
Get the training staff out and we'll make an attempt to get Roush off the field for a play. You may have wanted them to just slow the ready offense down. The Rays didn't seem to be overly fast there. Yeah, Roush is cramped here on the near sideline. Not a serious injury by any stretch. But he'll have to come off for at least a play. Reddy's with a slight advantage in total yards. Fewer penalties for fewer yards, but neither team can be very happy with how their penalty situation looks. Roush still working. Minute 53 left in the half. 17-13 readies as Roush makes it back to his feet. And Reddy's will have it second down and six. Without East Central's leading tackler, not on the field, 110 tackles, 10 tackles for loss in his career as a Tiger. Second and six, Edwards a three-step drop, looks to the outside, complete, first down and more. As quickly out of bounds goes Elijah George. His first catch is a ready, balls at the 43-yard line. First and 10 for the Reddies, and the clock will not start until the snap. Ready still in their own territory. Trips to the wide side once again. Edwards three steps, now steps up in the pocket. Over the right side, complete to Hatsis, who is stopped just shy of midfield, the 49-yard line. Six-yard gain. They'll make it a seven-yard gain. They'll get in midfield, where it'll be second down and three. A minute 18 left. Reddies do still have one timeout. East Central on the forefront here, showing some pressure from the front. Edwards goes right side, complete to Timmy Owen Jackson, enough for a ready first down. To the East Central 42 yard line. Clock now runs. Edwards gets a towel out of the way as we're inside of a minute. Edwards looking right side, wants George. A little pump fake, and now it's a takeoff running. He's Gets a yard out of it. The clock will still run. 45 seconds and counting. Second down and nine. Brady seemed to be spending a little too much time getting the play call in and getting back to the line. Second and nine. 33 seconds. Edwards wants to hit the big one. Over the middle. He's got a man. He's got Elijah George. One on one. Inside the 10. Yoro steps past his defender and into the end zone. Touchdown, Reddies. What a nice ball from Edwards to Elijah George. 41 yards. And the Reddies strike again just before the half. Come on to attempt the extra point. Clean snap, clean hold. The kick is up. And it is good. 24 seconds remain here in this second quarter of play. And the Reddies lead it 24 to 13. We'll keep it right here for the remainder of the half. A nice bounce back for the Reddies. Defense forces a turnover on downs. then goes 70 yards to increase their lead to double figures, their largest lead of the game. East Central has two timeouts left. They may not have the best field position. Robertson will tee it up. 
Davis and Scott stand on their own 10-yard line. Robertson will be kicking into what little wind there is. A high and relatively short kick fielded at the 20-yard line by Kevian Davis. He's going to try to go all the way across the field. He's across the 30, still on his feet, brought down just past the 40, down to the 42-yard line. And that's on the readies to keep East Central off the scoreboard. Two timeouts and 58 yards to work with. Out of the shotgun comes Trayer Edwards, steps up in the pocket, wants to throw, but now has to take off on foot. He's got a lot of room across midfield, still on his feet. Across the 40 and down. There might have been a fumble, but it's like it's killed at the 38 yard line. Looks like East Central will take a timeout. Their second charge timeout. They've got. Really on the field as runner was down by contact. Timeout, East Central. That's our second of the half. Baldy spot to the 37 yard line coming out of the timeout. With two seconds left on the clock. That play took a lot longer than the Tigers wanted it to. They'll have one more. Probably assume a heave at the end zone, and the Reddies are going into a prevent style defense. Pistol formation. Reddies are going to drop six men into coverage. Three standing on the end zone, three at the 25-yard line. Edwards wants to air it out, tucks and runs, and runs right in to Gary Lewis and Jordan Owens. And that is how the first half will end. Big stop for the Reddies. Trenton Moore in on it as well. And we have reached the end of the first half of play after a loss of about eight yards to that last play of the half, East Central will get the ball back to start the second half of action. The Reddies took a little while to warm themselves up, but once they did, the offense started rolling, making some big plays. Most of all, a six-play, 68-yard drive, taking a minute 45 off the clock. That, six, that uh, touchdown pass from Edwards to George that ended up being officially ruled at 41 yards. Three touchdowns in the second quarter for the Reddies. Spread pretty evenly throughout the half. We will, of course, talk more about all of the stats and scores from across the Great American Conference as our halftime show gets underway. The SCM Architects halftime show will get underway after this timeout. You're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. begins with your healthiest life. At Baptist Health, you'll find the comprehensive care you need for every person in your family. From pediatrics to primary care to women's health, we're equipped to partner with you in every phase of your wellness journey. You'll also find Baptist Health locations and clinics across the state, ensuring we're always there for you when and where you need us. Learn more about the state's most trusted name in healthcare, locate a clinic, 
Find a provider and more at baptist-health.com. Welcome in to the SCM Architects Halftime Show. Serving Henderson State University for over 20 years, SCM Architects is a proud sponsor of Ready Athletics. SCM Architects has provided Henderson State with a new dining hall, recreation center, student athlete success center, and dormitories all within the last five years. SCM Architects is a proud supporter of Henderson State Athletics. The Reddies, through three second half touchdowns, have jumped out after trailing early now lead it here at the half 24 to 13 and really in my mind the story of the first half has been penalties we'll look at it more in depth later as we take a look at the stats but east central currently with seven penalties for 83 yards the ready six penalties for 40 yards is nothing to be overly proud of either and i know that's going to be something that the coaching staff really wants to clean up in the second half, just some highlights. Both quarterbacks playing very good games. A combined seven incomplete passes between the two. Very even statistically in almost every category except the scoreboard, which is where it really is going to matter come the end of the game. You can outgain a team or gain just as much as the team, but they don't care about anything except what is on the scoreboard. Tale of two quarters. Both teams showing some signs of some early season jitters, maybe, and the uh, just the excitement to get back on the field. And it is it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you've got to kind of deal with what you have to deal with in those situations early just to see what you have, and then you can go from there. And the coaches are going to have that much more film on you, really when you see what the other team's doing to attack, what you're trying to do and how they make adjustments, especially after this half. You're going to see how both teams prepare for some adjustments, as I'm sure both coaching staffs are you know, working hard right now to see how can they create more separation if they're the Reddies or if they're East Central, they want to get back in this football game. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with your halftime stats and more as the SCM Architects Halftime Show rolls on after this on the Henderson State Sports Network. Your best life begins with your healthiest life. At Baptist Health, you'll find the comprehensive care you need for every person in your family. From pediatrics to primary care to women's health, we're equipped to partner with you in every phase. Find Baptist Health locations and clinics across the state, ensuring we're always there for you when and where you need us. Learn more about the state's most trusted name in healthcare, locate a clinic, find a provider, and more at baptist-health.com. SCM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for over 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the Dining Hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Hall. This year, SCM Architects have been privileged to work on the new Charles and Anita Cave Student Athlete Success Center and the restoration of the historic Captain Henderson House. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial interior design, historic preservation, and master planning project at scmarchitects.com. Hi, Ready fans. This is Athletic Director Sean Jones, inviting you to please consider supporting Henderson State's 430 student-athletes by joining. Gifts to the Ready Club are made through the Henderson State University Foundation and provide the necessary funding to support scholarships and equipment expenses, facility improvements, capital projects, and more. 
For more information on the benefits afforded to Ready Club members, click on the support link at hsusports.com. To make a gift online, visit hsusports.com forward slash donate. Your generosity and ready spirit are appreciated. Hey, future readies. Are you interested in a career in technology? Kennesha State University offers degrees in aviation, computer science, and engineering. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. We know you'd rather not be listening to an ad, but if you have to, a mini ad is better. Maybe even a Pepsi mini ad. Still all the flavor of the full-size thing, just minier. Pepsi minis. That's what I like. Apparently, you've been ordering Domino's new bread twists as a decoy to keep others away from your pizza. Only you suddenly wanted more bread twists for yourself. There are worse things than choosing between either pizza or warm dunkable bread twists and flavors like Parmesan, garlic, and cinnamon, like deciding between going to the dentist or DMV. So when it comes to giving you the best tasting problem you've ever had, sorry, you're welcome. Order any two or more of Domino's new bread twists or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each. Two item minimum. Handmade pan pizzas may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Welcome back into the SCM Architects Halftime Show. It's now time to take a look at today's halftime stats, sponsored by Pepsi. Pepsi is made for football watching and is proud to be the official soft drink of Ready Athletics. We will start with the Tigers from East Central, 173 total yards, 116 through the air, 57 on the ground, seven penalties for 83 yards we talked about, 10 first downs, they're averaging 5.6 yards per play, 10 and a half through the air, three and a half on the ground. Also been sacked a time or two a couple of times it looks like they are perfect one of one in the red zone a time of possession of 14 minutes and seven seconds they could they were able to get one sack defensively against the Reddies. four tackles for loss 10 first downs for the Tigers Trayer Edwards 11 of 14 through the air 116 yards two touchdowns Edwards also 10 rushes 52 yards he's the leading rusher Miles Davis with six carries for four yards and Jacob Tuttle has one carry for one yard. C.J. Moore, the leading receiver, four catches, 68 yards, and a touchdown. And Jackson Allen has the other touchdown, two catches for 16 yards. Dior Scott also making an impact, three catches for 21 yards. A perfect three of three in all of his targets. Miles Davis, the other receiver for the Tigers, two catches for 11 yards. Dior Scott, if that name does sound familiar, he was on the most recent season of Last Chance U, the football, where he was over at Laney College over there in the Bay Area of Northern California. For the Reddies, 219 yards of total offense, 168 yards through the air, 51 on the ground, 12 first downs, Reddies four of six, on third downs and technically 0 of 1 on fourth down even though they tried the field goal it was the botched snap 36 plays for the Reddies for those 219 compared to 31 East Central plays for 173. Reddies averaging just over six yards a play 15 yards per completion and about two and a half yards per rush a perfect three of three in the red zone held the ball for 15 minutes and 53 seconds they fumbled the ball four times did not lose any of them Two sacks by the defense, part of five tackles for loss. Andrew Edwards, 11 of 15, passing for 168 yards, three touchdowns, a passer rating of 233.4. It's a pretty high rating to get your year started. Corian Burrell, the leading rusher, 12 carries for 49 yards. And Jaquarian Turner has three carries for 11 yards. Edwards, five carries for three yards. Colby King is credited with a rush for negative 12 yards, but just trying to make something happen on that botched field goal snap. Timmy on Jackson, the leading receiver for the Reddies, three catches, 35 yards. Chris Hatz has three catches, 20 yards, and a touchdown. Elijah George, two catches, 50 yards, and a score. 
They were on back-to-back -back plays almost for those George catches. Jalen Abraham, two catches, 48 yards, and a touchdown. And Turner also had one catch out of the backfield for 15 yards defensively for the Reddies. Zach Dixon, the leading tackler with three. Randarius Terry has a couple, as does Jennings, Owens, Doyle, Thompson, Neal, and Strain. Half a sack each for Neal and Terry. There's their tackle for loss. Trenton Moore, a solo sack in that tackle for loss. Denzel Walter with that big tackle for loss as well. And Kirby Owens, a name we heard quite a few times. He's being at least in there on several stats. The Reddies had five drives in the first half. The first one, of course, 10 plays, 35 yards. Tried to go for a field goal after stalling out, but had the botch snap, and that ended up being a turnover on downs. And they went field goal on their second drive. They're about three minutes left in the first quarter. And after that, all three of their second half possessions ended in touchdowns. Three plays, six yards, 48 seconds. Seven plays, 70 yards, two minutes, 43 seconds. And six plays, 68 yards, a minute and 45. Their average time of possession is three minutes and eight seconds. Five drives for East Central as well. Went touchdown, punt, touchdown, turnover on downs, and then it ran out at the half. Let's take another timeout. Coming back after this, we'll give you an update of your Southwest Sporting Goods scoreboard as all the games across the GAC. We'll keep you up to date on that and much more as the SCM Architects Halftime Show rolls on after this here on the Henderson State Sports Network. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have a personalized service which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Arkadelphia or call 870-246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. SCM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for over 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the Dining Hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Hall. This year, SCM Architects have been privileged to work on the new Charles and Anita Cave Student Athlete Success Center and the restoration of the historic Captain Henderson House. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial interior design, historic preservation, and master planning project at scmarchitects.com. Java Primo, where amazing coffee is just the beginning. Visit Java Primo Coffee House, Cafe, and more on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia, on Central Avenue in Hot Springs, and on the Square in Magnolia. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, gifts, or desserts, Java Primo has something amazing for everyone. Shop for gifts and gift cards for your favorite ready online 24-7 at javaprimo.com. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs. Stop by the Ready Bookstore, located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game, you can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore, or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of Henderson State Athletics. Back here on the SCM Architects Halftime Show, it's now time for a Southwest Sporting Goods scoreboard update. Southwest Sporting Goods is proud to offer a wide selection of sporting goods to fit your needs. Call them today, 246-2311, or give them a visit, 115 South 6th Street in Arkadelphia. We will start in Weatherford, Oklahoma, where five minutes into the fourth quarter of play, Washita leads Southwestern Oklahoma by a score of 38 to 7. It has been all Tigers all afternoon or all evening in that one. Riley Harms has thrown for four touchdowns. Kendall Gibbons has run for one. Not a lot of damage done on the ground, believe it or not, for the Tigers. That seems to be their kind of base set. They've only run for 121 yards compared to throwing for 283. Southwestern, 95 passing yards, 24 on the ground, 161 
Total yards there. Looks like the Tigers will cruise to victory there. Another cruise to victory there in Bethany. About four minutes into the fourth quarter, Harding all over Southern Nazarene, 53 to 13. We talked about Blake Dela Cruz with his four first half rushing touchdowns. He might not have played in the second half. If he did, he did not carry the football. Cole Keelan, the quarterback, got a run. Running touchdown, and Josh Strickland a run as well. Southern Nazarene, Gage Porter, throwing a couple of interceptions. He's also, however, run for 98 yards and two touchdowns. He's a dangerous quarterback. Just does not seem to have a lot of help in a lot of these situations. 10.52 left to play in the fourth down in Magnolia, Southern Arkansas, 27, Southeastern Oklahoma, 19. Both teams somewhat low scoring compared to some of the games around the league. Pretty effective passing game for Southeastern, 201 yards through the air, 223 yards on the ground for Southern Arkansas, so it's been a, a battle back and forth there. Southern Arkansas has big time on the ground. OB Jones, the quarterback, has run for 93 yards in addition to throwing for 87. Jarek Scales for 61 yards. Multiple guys already over 25 yards receiving. A minute 46 left in the third quarter in Alva. Arkansas Monticello leads Northwestern Oklahoma State 33 to 24. A pretty high scoring game. Demilan Brown back again, and he seems to be doing as much as he possibly can. His numbers aren't great. Four rushes for a yard. 19 of 40 passing, 277 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. It seems like they are wanting to go a lot more pass heavy are these bowl weevils. That'll be something for us to track as we go throughout the rest of the season. Halftime score in Shawnee, and it's a low scoring affair as Oklahoma Baptist leads Arkansas Tech 13 to seven. Neither team just setting the world on fire. Both teams decent numbers yardage wise. Tech has run 40 plays for 142 yards. Oklahoma Baptist 30 plays for 175 yards. Nobody really with a lot of noteworthy stats. Tech has played two quarterbacks again. They struggle with that last year, not knowing which quarterback was really going to be their setup. And Oklahoma Baptist, not the ideal start today for Aiden Thompson, four of 10 for 68 yards. They're gonna seem to wanna run the ball as well. He runs a lot, does Thompson, EJ Moore. Also 13 carries for 61 yards. And of course in here in Arkadelphia with just under three minutes left to go in our halftime. The Reddies lead East Central by a score of 24 to 13. Let's take one more time out. We'll come back and get us close to that second half kickoff as football continues from Arkadelphia after this on the Henderson State Sports Network. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game, you can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore, or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of Henderson State Athletics. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy, all working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. SCM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for over 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the dining hall, the Charles Sun Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Hall. 
This year, SCM architects have been privileged to work on the new Charles and Anita Cave Student Athlete Success Center and the restoration of the historic Captain Henderson House. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at scmarchitects.com. I'm Sadie, student and team leader. And I'm Lauren, student and agriculturalist. When we rise above alcohol and drugs, we reach for, expect, achieve, and accomplish more. The minute we think about using alcohol or drugs, we lower our chance of living our best life. When we rise above, we respect ourselves and lead by example. Being drug and alcohol free has always been the best way to be. Let's do this. Join the RAD movement. And challenge yourself to rise above alcohol and drugs. This message brought to you by Washtenaw Children, Youth, and Family Services Prevention Program. Brookshire's proudly supports the Henderson State Reddies football team. At Brookshire's, you can save on fuel or groceries with your points, where every dollar you spend earns you one point. Plus, score big with meat that is cut fresh daily and enjoy lower prices on the freshest produce. In a hurry? Let us do the shopping for you with our convenient curbside online ordering and pickup. Visit Brookshire's.com to place your order today. Brookshire's, your ultimate tailgating destination. Go Reddies and go Brookshire's. Just about ready to start this third quarter of action here in Arkadelphia. I'm Blake Smith here with you from Carpenter Haygood Stadium. Reddy's lead East Central 24-13 as we get ready to kick it off. It will be the Reddy's kicking away to East Central. They'll be kicking from our broadcast right to, or excuse me, from our left to our right. As we start, as Axel Robertson will be ready to kick it away. Same way we ended the second quarter. Both teams going the same direction. Davis and Scott will be back deep to receive for the Tigers. Standing on or around their own 10-yard line. Looks like we're ready. 30 minutes of football remain here in Arkadelphia on this Thursday. What a way to finish the month of August. As Robertson's kick is high and short, fielded by Davis at the eight yard line, and here he comes out. Big seam, great job wrapping up there. We'll just have to see who the first man there was. Ball out to the 25 -yard line. All right, Darian Thompson was in there for the Reddies, right at the 25 yard line. Might have been Fred O'Donnell. Wearing number two right now. You're getting a little action on special teams. Trey Edwards will lead his offense back onto the field. Davis will stand to his left. Two receivers to the near side with a tight end. Hand off to Davis. Right up the middle. Runs right into the ready defensive line. Zach Dixon in there on the stop. He leads the Reddies in tackles now with four and was pretty pumped up about it as he got up off the turf. Out of the shotgun, bunch formation for Edwards. Has to roll out of the pocket to his right. Throws back across the middle of the field. Caught by Dior Scott up to the 30-yard line. For a gain of five, it'll make it third down and five. Brady fans making some noise down in the bleachers below me. Twin receivers to either side. Rolling out left is Edwards. Now goes in the deep post for Scott, but threw it too far. And the Tigers go three and out on their first possession of the second half. Great stop by the Reddies. And now they'll get the football back. And Devin Adams will have a chance for another good return. If you'll remember, he set the Reddies up in great position with a 39-yard return to start their second drive, what would be their first touchdown drive. 
see how much pressure the Reddies bring after the punter. Left foot to kick high, wobbling deep. Adams backpedals to about the 23-yard line. Has to plunge forward across the 25 and down to the 27-yard line. Just nothing developed there for Adams, so he had to make use of what Lidley had. Media timeout. We'll step That's aside first. Second. 13.36 to play in the third quarter. Reddy's lead at 24-13. Back after this, you're listening to Reddy Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Thirteen thirty-six left here in quarter number three. Reddy's lead at 24-13. Defense does a great job limiting East Central to a three and out as we start the quarter. We're starting the third quarter, and the Reddies will start their first possession. Don't forget next Saturday, September the 9th, a 6 o'clock kickoff in Durant, Oklahoma. Reddies take on Southeastern. First trip to Paul Laird Field in a couple of years. We'll be on air with the Domino's pregame show at 5 o'clock on the Henderson State Sports Network. Join us radio only for that one. Edwards play fake. Rolls off right side. Back row in the middle of the field. There's Timmy Owen Jackson. Completed the 45 and into East Central Territory. And just strides out of bounds at the Tiger 46. A big gain again for Timmy Owen Jackson, who's starting to come into his own in this ready receiving core. Just like that, the Reddies are in Tiger territory. Handoff, Corey and Burrell goes left side, plunges up the middle and down to the 40-yard line. Good hard run of six yards on first down. A beautiful full moon out to the southeast as it is rising. All four receivers for the Reddies to the right side. Now Davis will come in motion to balance it a little bit, set up as a tight end, and Coach Maxfield didn't like what he saw. He's going to take a timeout. Timeout. Henderson State. It's the first of the half. So after a great long pass completion, yardage after the catch by Timmy Owen Jackson. A good run by Corey and Burrell. The Reddies couldn't get set up right for a second down and four play. They're at the East Central 40-yard line. 12-40 remains here in quarter number three. The Reddies still lead 24-13. Scored three touchdowns in the, third, in the second quarter, including 14 unanswered points to take what was once a seven to three game. And now have outscored East Central 21 to six since then. The missed extra point looming somewhat large for East Central at the moment. Nothing earth shattering just yet considering it is a two possession game and could be three after this play, Davis will come in from the slot. He'll line up as a tight end instead. Tiger showing blitz. Hand off Burrell. Bounces to the right side. Tripped it up and down to the 37-yard line. A little extracurricular there. Kayvon Curry trying to get into it with Brandon Bishop, the ready right tackle. Edwards quickly. Hand off to Burrell on third and short. He trips forward, just barely gets a yard, but it is enough for a first down. Roush back in there, leading the way on the tackle. 
And the clock rolls. Burrell comes out frustrated with that last carry. Out of the shotgun for Edwards. Tiger show blitz again. Hard from the right side. Has to pass down to Jackson, who is going on a wheel route. But there was so much pressure from the left side that Edwards just had to get rid of the ball. Davis on that tackle. Kevian Davis. We heard his name a couple times on special teams. So he's trying to make more of a effect on the game from the defensive side. Coming out of a safety or nickelback type position. Three-step drop for Edwards right through the hands of Caden Davis and incomplete. And a flag after the play. This may be against the Tigers. Another taunting penalty, maybe another roughing the passer. After play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 33 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Another unsportsmanlike penalty on the Tigers. And John LaTrenta cannot be happy with what he's seen so far today. Ball the 20 yard line, so the Reddies right in the red zone where they're a perfect three of three tonight. Now the shotgun showing blitz again. Check down pass complete. There's Timmy on Jackson. He turns on the Jets inside the 10. He's got the first down, down to the nine yard line. First and goal, Reddies. And Jackson might be earning himself the number one receiver spot, even though he plays out of the slot. Hand off, Burrell tries to get outside, cuts back. Spins back inside, runs into a couple of Tiger tacklers, including Prince Uman Millian, Uman Mielin, and might have gotten two yards out of that second down and eight. Burrell to Edwards is right. Twin receivers to either side. Play clock at 14 as Edwards takes the snap. Looking for the post corner route. Wanted Jackson, but led him too far. Edwards rushed there too. Jackson flowers with the hurry. Fifth year from Kansas City on the Kansas side. They had Jackson on that corner route out of the slot. Couldn't quite get him there. Clock will stop at 10.55 here off the third. Trips left, the wide side of the field. Edwards wants to throw, three-step drop across the middle, incomplete. Wanted Elijah George, and a flag comes in from the back side. They're going to get a defensive pass interference. And the Reddies are going to get it half the distance. There is no foul for defense pass interference. The ball was tipped by the defensive player out of the quarterback's hand in the backfield. Be fourth down. And you could hear the ready coaches on the referee's mic. Going to go ahead and send the field goal unit out. We'll keep it a two possession game should King's effort be good. Hatsis will hold. Connor Viapondo will snap. Clean snap, clean hold, the kick is up. And the field goal attempt is good. 10-48 left to play in our third quarter with the score, Reddy's 27, East Central 13. We'll be back after this. You're listening to Reddy Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. At Southern Bank Corp, we are wealth builders for everyone. We see building wealth as helping people succeed and creating strong financial futures. For some, it's having tools to build credit and buy a first home. For others, working with our award-winning SBA team to launch or grow a small business. And still others might use our unique savings plan today to save for tomorrow's dreams. Wherever you are in your wealth building journey, Southern Bank Corp can help. Stop by or visit BankSouthern.com to get started. Proud supporter of the Henderson Reddies, Southern Bank Corp. 
10.48 left in quarter number three. The Reddies lead East Central by a score of 27 to 13, and now have made it 17 unanswered points since trailing this game 13 to 10. You now the offense and the defense alike have woken themselves up. Always fun this first home game of the year to get to come around to campus and just kind of walk around the alma mater and see what all is going on. Some nice, interesting changes. Excited to see. Got to visit with my old mentor and voice professor, Dr. Bill Higgins, before the game. Always fun to get to catch up with the old professors. Kick is away by Robertson. Fielded at the nine-yard line by Dior Scott across the 25 and up to the 30-yard line. Right at the 30-yard line is where he'll be stopped, and the Tigers will take over first and 10. Game starting to go final. We'll give you updates of those on our Hampton Inn postgame show coming up immediately following the game tonight. Edwards will be in the shotgun. Davis will be to his left. Twin receivers stacked to both sides. A handoff will go to Dave. No, Edwards will pull it out and keep it across the 30-yard line. And he will be marked down at the 33-yard line. Call it a gain of three, second down and seven. A little read option. The Tigers have kind of gotten away from it. It's done. It has done them some good. They've gotten positive yardage out of it all but one time. Edwards wants to go to the air, looking right side. Checks down, complete Isaiah Wilhoit. He is short of the line again. Down to the 38-yard line. We'll have to see. Yeah, it looked like Jacob Neal on the tackle there. Linebacker in coverage on the inside receiver. Makes it a third down and two. Allen, the tight end in motion right to left across the formation. Tigers will take some time to look over to the sideline. Edwards drops back with right side. Got the first down there. C.J. Moore again out of bounds into ready territory to the 48-yard line. On the mark of the 49, rather, excuse me. It'll be a first and 10 for the Tigers. From the ready 49 yard line on the right hash, handoff goes to Davis, right up the gut. Runs into a couple of readies led by Zach Dixon again. Looked like Shaq Robinson was in there as well. Gain of three on the play, make a second down and seven. 9.05 and counting left here in the third. Another free play for the Tigers. Rays couldn't get off the field. And what a shame because it was a sack by Trenton Moore. Would have been his second of the game, but the Reddies couldn't get that 12th man off the field. Illegal substitution, defense. More than 11 players on the field at the snap. Five yards, still second down. So instead of second and seven, we're now looking at second and two. But instead of looking at third and 12 or 13, we're looking at second and two, if you want to look at it that way. Second down, two to go. Twins to either side. Davis now leaves Edwards alone in the backfield. Three-step drop, tunnel screen complete and blown up, but not before did Jace Wyatt. He got to the line to gain right at two yards and right at a first down. David 
No, they'll mark him half a yard short. Surprising spot there out of the pistol. Third down and less than a yard. The handoff to Davis. He was tripped at the line but fell forward. Now will they give him the spot? It looks like he'll have enough. Yes, he'll have more than enough there. Ball the 39-yard line of the Reddies. Clock continues to roll, 7.45. Out of the shotgun. Edwards, five-step drop in some trouble around the backside. It's a check down, and the pass to Davis was incomplete. Give a lot of credit to Dylan Ndambuki. On the pressure there, and no gain on the play. If that was caught, there would have been at least a couple of yards gained. job by the ready front four really causing some damage read option Edwards keeps Edwards gonna get hit and brought down Fred Lewis and Dembuki again after a two-yard gain will make it third down and eight Trips to the right side, just barely the wide side of the field. Edwards three-step drop, looks over the middle, fires, has a man complete at the 25-yard line. It's Josh Little on the reception, the sophomore from Dallas, and it gives East Central the first down at the 25-yard line. First catch of the day for Josh Little, the sophomore from Dallas. Great option, handoff goes to Davis, across the 25, down to the 23. Ready rush defense looked like they were there a little bit. Jordan Owens in there, Javante Sims as well. Tigers quickly back at it on second down and nine. Five-step drop, trouble, Edwards throws it away. Wanted to get it to Little, had nothing to get it to. A third down and nine with the clock stopped here at 6.07. Tigers taking a lot of time getting the line. See if they can find something to work on third down. Edwards looking left, throwing toward the pylon. Short of it, incomplete. Wanted Jackson Allen and couldn't get him. Nice job in coverage there by Tim Jennings. Now it's fourth down. It looks like the Tigers will go for the field goal attempt. Looks like you say will have an attempt from 40 yards in the left hash. Clean snap and hold. The kick is up, and that is no good. He left it out to the right. Might have got it into the wind, and the Reddies will take over. A missed 40-yard field goal by the Tigers. We'll give the Reddies pretty decent field position. and roll through this one. 5.22 left in the third. Reddy's 27, East Central 13. Spot the ball at the Reddy 24 yard line, first and 10. Edwards will send trips to the left side. Jaquarian Turner in at running back. And Turner will get the handoff on first down. He's got a seam across the 30 and down to the 33 yard line, a nine yard carry. Orange Aquarian Turner, it'll be second down and one. Ty 
tight formation. Turner to the right side of Edwards now. Single receiver to the right side. Hand off Turner, lowers his shoulder. The pile pushes him back, but they'll give him the 35 yard line, which is enough for a ready first down. Two carries, 10 yards. They don't ask you how you get it. They ask how many yards you get. Right from the middle of the 35 yard line. Three receivers set. Edwards, quick three-step drop, right side, looking for Elijah George, whose jersey was held incomplete, and I don't think the field judge saw it. Got a full handful of jersey, it looked like, did Lino Odenat, a junior corner from Melbourne, Florida. Second down and 10 either way. You like having George in those one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's had a nice nine after a bit of a slow start. He and Jackson could both say they fight for the number one receiver position. Jackson was lined up at running back. Now it goes out into the left slot. A little bit of a low snap. Edwards handles, looks toward the boundary for Jackson, and he's got it. The Timmy Owen Jackson at the 44-yard line for a nine yard gain up to the 44 yard line. We third down and one. Third down and one. Two receivers at the short side of the field. Two tight end set, handoff Turner. Right up the left side, off left guard. Did he get the spot? All depends on where they ruled the ball when he was down. Well, that's going to be close. I think he's going to be short by the nose of the football. The Raiders go for it here. They are going to go. Now the Raiders are going to hurry to the line. Same formation. Right around the same play. Turner looks to go right side, gets the first down, and falls forward to the 46-yard line. Roush with another tackle, but it doesn't matter. Ball spot on the ready 46-yard line where it's first and 10. Two forty-two and counting left in the third quarter. 27-13 readies. It's been that way for a little while. New tight end, Cameron Gallagher comes in motion to the right side. Screen pass complete to Hatzis. Gets to the outside and he's got some room and Chris Hatzis turns on the Jets. No one's gonna stop him. 10-5, touchdown readies. Chris Hatzis, the 54 yard touchdown reception and it is now a three possession game. That was a great screen to the inside. Got a great block. I think that was George there and allowed Hatches to spring to the right side. Defender took a bad angle. Gave the Reddies another touchdown. King's kick is up and good. 2.24 left to play in the third quarter with a new score, Reddies 34, East Central 13. And drive summary, seven plays, 76 yards, 258 off the clock. 54 of those yards on that last play. A 54 yard touchdown pass. 45 yards after the catch. The second touchdown reception of the day for Chris Hatzis. He loves these first games of the season. You remember a couple years ago when we went we're at Southwestern Oklahoma, he caught two touchdown passes in the first game as well. Loves to get his season off to a great start. And he has done so and given the Reddies a 21 point lead, it's 34 to 13. Robertson will get ready to kick it away. Kick is underway, high end over end, relatively short, fielded at the 11 yard line by Dior Scott. 
He'll be tripped up at the 25 and brought down at the maybe the 24. I don't know if they'll give him that yardage or not. Davis still in it running back. Treyer Edwards, the quarterback. Justin Benvy was back to be the other returner besides Sky. Took Davis's place. Screen pass behind the line of scrimmage to Davis. He's wrapped up from behind. Good tackle there by A.J. Zarate. The 30-yard line, a five-yard gain, though, on first down. Second down and five from the 30. Ball on the left hash. Twins to either side, bunch formation. Edwards looking over the middle, finds a man, complete to Scott, but he's brought down shy of the line to gain. Another tackle for Zach Dixon. He's really made his mark here early for the Reddies. Third down and one. Edwards will go under center. Try to get the Reddies to go offside again. Goes off the right side, has the first down and more. Hit hard and finally brought down. Owens made the initial hit. It took Randarius Terry coming over to finish the play off. Bounced off of that hard shoulder tackle of Owens. 34-13 readies. Coming up on a minute to play here in quarter number three. Twins to either side. They're out wide, but they're stacked one behind the other. Five-step drop for Edwards over the middle. Once more incomplete. Great job going up and getting that one by who else? Kirby Owens seems to be the player of the drive right now. Moore wanted a flag, but they both went up in the air after the football. There's nothing there. Second down and 10. Clock stopped at 50 seconds. Edwards bull rushed and brought down A.J. Zarate leading the way there. Looks like Tyler Strain will get credit for half of that sack as well. A good series for Zarate. The junior from Van, Texas. He's played a couple years on special teams, getting a chance defensively here. New running back in the game as Jake Tuttle comes in for the second. If it's just his second play from scrimmage. Edwards steps up, throws it toward the boundary once. What a catch by Dior Scott. And he just has enough for a first down too. Up to the ready 47 yard line. I thought that one was gonna be thrown away. Three seconds left, and now Edwards is going to be helped off the field by a member of the medical staff, and that should be the end of the quarter. So now the backup quarterback, J of A. Magale, is going to have to come in, potentially. Oh, and now Edwards Injury timeout. Down. Injury timeout. Could not get all the way to the Tiger sideline without going down. We hope that's nothing serious for Edwards. Job, now both teams will get a chance to get a little water. As Edwards is finally helped off the field. Now the question is, will this play happen before the end of the quarter? The rules being what they are, my prediction is no. They'll run it 
and the quarter will end. At the end of three quarters of play, the score, Reddy's 34, East Central 13. We'll be back after this with your final quarter of action. This is Reddy Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. We offer the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer who give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia, or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. At Southern Bank Corp, we are wealth builders for everyone. We see building wealth as helping people succeed in creating strong financial futures. For some, it's having tools to build credit, buy a first home. For others, working with our award-winning SBA team to launch or grow a small business. And still others might use our unique savings plan today to save for tomorrow's dreams. Wherever you are in your wealth building journey, Southern Bank Corp can help. Stop by or visit banksouthern.com to get started. Proud supporter of the Henderson Reddies. Southern Bank Corp, member of the CEO Boston. Blake Smith back here with you from Geo Services Field at Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia. Reddy's lead at 34 to 13 over East Central. As we get ready to start the fourth quarter of play, the main story right now, Trey Edwards, East Central's quarterback, still on the sideline. Their backup quarterback, J of A Magale. In. First down and 10 for the ready 47 yard line. Trouble with the snap. Magale has to roll out to his right and is going to have to throw it away. Nice catch on the sideline. There is a flag on the play in the backfield though and that's not a good sign. Personal foul, roughing a passer, number 33 of the defense. 15 yards from previous spot, automatic first down. That's Cottrell Wallace, the first time we've heard. That's the big sophomore from Bryant today. It'll be a first down for the Tigers from the 32 yard line. Magale, check down pass, complete to Scott. Spins off a of one tackler. Reddy's fly to the football, do a nice job there, but Scott gets all the way down to the 28-yard line. Four-yard gain there. Bring up second down and six. Scott doing everything he can to keep his team in the game. All of the six o'clock games have gone final. I'll give you those updates post-game. Magale fakes the handoff, looks for the check down, now goes over the middle, right through the hands of Cam Thomas, incomplete. Moore pleading for a flag, and he won't get it. Third down, and six for East Central. Tuttle still in as the running back. Next to Magale, the backup quarterback from Tacoma, Texas. 6'3", 233-pound senior is J of A Magale. Tigers will look to the sideline as the play clock comes to seven seconds, and now six. Gonna snap off in a hurry on third and long. Rush, Magale goes to the right side. Way too high for Jackson Allen. Might have got a fingertip on it. And they get fourth down, and the Tigers almost certainly have to go for it here. The offense does stay on the field. The clock is stopped, of course, on an incomplete pass. Freddy's have five in the line, looking to potentially blitz here and trust their secondary and man coverage. Tuttle goes to the sideline, 
Magale flushed down the pocket, almost brought down by Neal. Sets his feet, fires one to the end zone. It is incomplete. Receiver fell down, and the Reddies will take over on downs again. I think Scott was the intended receiver on that one as well, and he just tripped on the turf and couldn't recover in time to make the play. Ready offense will get it in pretty good field position with a chance to all but ice this game with some points. I gotta get football switched out. One, one that had been used for tires. Three receiver set for the Reddies. Burrell stands to Edwards' right after being shifted over by a side. Hand off off the left side. Burrell across the 30 and finally brought down on the 34-yard line by Roush. Von Roush made several tackles today. Doesn't seem to have been enough, and there's an injured Tiger on the field. Injury timeout. Injury timeout. We'll have to see what the injury to Treyer Edwards was on the offensive series. We'll have to see who the injured Tiger is. All the ready offense will get together. Help him up. That'll be Darian Williams. We've heard his name a couple of times tonight. That'd be second down and five for the Rays. We've had a lot of good, positive gains on first down. To put the Rays in second and manageable situations here. We've had a lot of five, six yard gains on first down, and that's been key to help the Ready offense stay ahead of schedule or at least on schedule. Gallagher back in as a tight end in the set. He'll go opposite of Burrell as he's brought down for a two yard loss in the play. Give credit to Umami Miellen. That'll be third down and six. Second down's been a bit of a struggle for the Reddies, they've not been as successful as they've needed to be on several second downs and put themselves in some frustrating third down situations. They're down in six, play fake Edwards and immediately rolls out right, has a lot of turf ahead of him. Gets the first down and more spins off a tackler and falls to the turf at the 48 yard line of the Reddies. More than enough for a ready first down. Actually, they're going to mark him at 49. And the clock will roll inside of 13 minutes to play, 12.36 here as the Reddies lead 34 to 13. Hand off, KB on first down, right side, off right tackle. Another five yard gain for Burrell on first down. Second down and five. Kayvon Curry on the tackle as Burrell comes out of the game. Jeremiah Davis will be in. Second time we've seen JD today. Kind of one of those short yardage running backs. Maybe that's trying to be the, the role that the ready coaching staff tries to fill. JD gets the handoff, hits a man hard, keeps his feet moving. The pile pushes him forward. It's going to give him the first down and more. Davis all the way to the 39-yard line. Thirty-nine yard line of the Tigers. It's first down and ten. A 
Davis remains in the game. He'll go to the left side of Edwards out of the three receiver set. Screen pass complete to Jackson. Simeon tries to get to the outside, spins off one tackler and is brought down by the second. Minimal gain on first down. Got him a couple of yards up to the 37 yard line. Flowers on the tackle for East Central. In 26 to play, a three touchdown lead for the Reddies. This one will potentially seal it. Screen pass the other side this time. It's the Hatsis. He tried to split defenders, and there's going to be a holding flag. I have a feeling. It's Elijah George over there. I'm going to get tagged with a hold. Holding, number five of the offense, 10 yards. Still third, still second down. So that'll put the Raiders behind the chains on second down. Second down and 14 from the East Central 43 yard line, but that clock continues to run. To be inside of 10 minutes by the next snap. Edwards going to the air, going left side. Once his man incomplete, and there's a flag. Abraham got tripped up by Martinez Hill, and Hill's going to be tagged with his fourth flag of the day. Pass interference, number five of the defense, 15 yards from previous spot, automatic first down. Ready to go 15 yards. And another first down up to the 27 yard line. Ball on the right hash. Dawson Brown back in at receiver on the near side. He's the lone receiver to the wide side of the field. Elijah George, old man to the short side. Two tight end set. Jaquarian Turner in at running back as well, and he'll get the call. Turner crosses up a couple of guys, gets brought down hard by Amir Muhammad, linebacker for the Tigers. Guess what? Another five-yard gain on first down for a ready running back. Turner will be relieved. off again. Up the left side this time is Fred O'Donnell. First carry of the game for Fred and he gets a good hard earned three yards. Be a third down and two from inside the 20 yard line. Brady's doing a great job of keeping that clock moving and continuing to get positive yards. They'll love a first down here. Can they get one. It's going to be a direct snap this time it looks like to Burrell, but it goes behind him and KB's going to have to fall on it. Some struggles with the staff tonight. A couple of first game jitters for these readies, even though the offensive line is one of the more experienced units on the team. Four returners from last year, returning starters. Now there's going to be a deep field goal attempt for Colby King. A 47-yard attempt just right of center. Clock continues to run. The field goal unit gets set up in plenty of time. Clean snap, clean hold. King's kick low, spinny, and short. All right, a little bit to the left as well. 47-yard Field goal attempt is no good, and the Tigers will take over. First down and a 10. We are going to keep playing on through that. We've taken our two necessary media timeouts. 
will probably keep it going for the remainder of the night. 7.47 to play. Reddy still the three touchdown lead. It's going to be hard to overturn that one. At the 7.47 mark. First and 10 for the Tigers. Magalay, the pop pass is complete to DeMurray and Montgomery, and he'll be brought out of bounds. A five-yard loss as Montgomery could never get turned up field. The officials didn't even know how far back it went. Second down and 15, and the clock continues to run. Up some coverages a little bit. David Hall comes in the game as the running back. With Magalay. Bit of an off to the side snap. Pass complete to C.J. Moore, and he's pushed out of bounds. Just a two-hand shove out of bounds by Colby Crawford. Gets those five yards back, and now it's going to be third down and ten. In receivers to either side, but the Reddies are going to take a timeout. Timeout. Henderson State. That's our second of the half. Second charge timeout of the half for the Reddies at the 645. Mark a 34-13 Reddy lead. Relatively comfortable, but frustrating for East Central that they cannot get their starting quarterback, Trayer Edwards, back in the game. Miles Davis, the starting running back, has also not returned. See him over on the sideline without his helmet. A little further away than a majority of the Tigers' offensive players. Can't make it all the way across. Can't really see where Edwards is. He's being tended to by staff on the field or if they have taken him off to the locker room for further evaluation. But J of A. Magale is going to be in here, and he's facing a pretty tough situation. Murray and Montgomery's is running back. Third down and 10. Off to the right again. Magalay flushed out of the pocket. And he's going to be brought down. What a tandem sack by Trenton Moore. And Kirby Owens again. No, Zach Dixon, excuse me. Newcomers for the ready defense making a difference. And the Tigers have no choice but to punt. Devin Adams will stand back around his own 45-yard line. Clean snap. The punt is away from just about the 10-yard line. Adams fields it at the 47-yard line, wants to reverse field, and has a seam. Cuts back to the right side, spins all that for about eight yards. They'll give him the 46-yard line, I think, but there is a flag on the play. Tenth ready penalty of the game. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 24, the return team. Ten yards from the spot. First down. It's Darian Thompson that gets tagged with the block in the back there. But the Reddies will have a chance to milk this clock down quite a bit. This will be our first media timeout of the fourth quarter. We will step aside then. 
As Frank Rittenberg says that we will do so. 5.45 to play, 34-13 Reddies back after this. This is Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Education, commercial interior design, historic preservation, and master planning project at scmarchitects.com. Five forty-five to play, a thirty-four thirteen lead for the Reddies over East Central. East Central has been held scoreless for a long time now. And the Reddies have run off what is now 24 consecutive points. Pre offense will take over, have a chance to run a good chunk of this clock off with a couple of first downs. Makes the handoff, Edwards on the keeper. Right side, first down a little bit more. In the Tiger territory, the East Central 45-yard line. Will be in the shotgun in no major hurry. Handoff left side, hit at the line, Fred O'Donnell, but fights forward for a couple of yards. Not enough. A couple of. It's up to about the 43 yard line. Second down and eight. Come the Reddies hand off O'Donnell right up the gut again across the 40 yard line and down to the 38. Third and three coming up now for the Reddies. Take in no major hurry. They can run a lot of time off this clock and can possibly be the last team to touch the football. And off, oh, got through the line to the East Central defenders, but O'Donnell stays on his feet, but he is going to be brought down for a loss of a yard. The Reddies will let as much of this time tick off the clock as they can. It will be fourth down and four. Looks like... The punt unit will come onto the field. Axel Robertson will try to pin the Tigers deep. He'll stand on his own 47-yard line. Back deep at the 10-yard line is East Central's returner. That will be Dior Scott. Fair catch called for. No, it's not. It's down all the way at the 2-yard line. This is the final media timeout of the game. 
All right, you heard Frank Wittenberg. We'll take another timeout. 2.46 to play. Reddy's 34, East Central 13. This is Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Hey, future Reddies. Are you interested in a career in technology? Henderson State University offers degrees in aviation, computer science, and engineering. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Crisp crunch of that first nacho chip with its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans. It's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. <sighs> East Central back on their own two-yard line. And they're going to have to have a lot of things go their way if they want to get back into this game. Hand off to Montgomery, left side and out of bounds at about the 10-yard line, a nice eight-yard gain. On the play for the Tigers, it'll be second down. And two. Cottrell Wallace out there on the tackle. Bit of a slow night for Cottrell. I know he will make his presence felt. Montgomery hit after the first down. Luke Roca leading the way on the tackles there. Ball at the 13 yard line. That'll be a first down. The clock is going to roll inside of two minutes. Magale looks to throw. Check down to Montgomery. Back inside the 10-yard line. He's going to be knocked out of bounds right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Uh, they're get maybe two on the play before Cottrell Wallace gets credited with the official tackle. Second down and eight. Clock is stopped at a minute 40. We're inside of two minutes. Off to the side, pass out to the boundary, and it's bounced to Josh Little and incomplete. And stops that clock again, which the Reddy fans are probably not overly happy about. and eight from the East Central 15 yard line for the Tigers. Magale looks to throw left side, got his man complete, but short of the line to gain. Now the question is, who's the receiver there? I think it's Kylan Mathis. And now the Tigers are gonna try on fourth and one, go for a little sneak play. Magale, Pyle's going to push him. I think they've got it. Get some different ready players rotating in the game. A minute 12. They'll spot the ball and give it a chance before they start to run it. First down and 10. Neither team has scored here in the fourth quarter of play. Reddies have been able to take a lot of time off the clock. Magale over the middle, complete again to Mathis. Complete, balls on the ground, fumbled, and recovered by the Reddies. Here comes Paul Manning at the 10 of the 5, and just as I say it, the Reddies score a defensive touchdown to wrap this one up. Out 
How about a fumble recovery for a touchdown for Paul Manning? And the Reddies have had a little bit of everything, including now a defensive touchdown. I think the extra point team is a man short. And the Rays are going to have to take a timeout. Time out. Henderson State, that's the third and final timeout of the game. Atsis was had his mind somewhere else. It wasn't out there. Now the Reddies will have to use their final timeout on the extra point with 47 seconds. He's going back on the live feed and watching that Manning touchdown. As we go through this timeout, it was caught. A spin, that ball was lost on a spin move as Mathis tried to get a couple of extra yards and instead lost a shoe and the football. That resulted in a ready touchdown. Take them how you get them. And the ready is up over the 40 point mark. Traditionally one of the better offenses in the GAC. So over that 40 point mark. After only getting there three times last year, getting close. King's extra point is good. There's 47 seconds left. I'm sure the Reddies will want to get this one kicked off and done pretty quick. Reddy scored more than 50 points, or more than 40 points, rather, at Northwestern last season, at Southern Nazarene, that overtime game, and at home against Oklahoma Baptist. Scored 37 on two different occasions against UAM and in the overtime loss to Washita and scored 35 points against Arkansas Tech in the win. And a high powered offense that has accounted for exactly 400 yards tonight. So now the Reddies look ahead at Southeastern Oklahoma State We'll go to Durant next weekend. Now Robertson will kick it away. Will he squib kick it just to get the clock moving a little bit? Oh, he'll have a high end over end. Nice kick, fielded at the 10 yard line, but fair caught by the deep man back there, Davian Blewett. A freshman from Dallas. The 25 yard line for the last couple of plays of the game. kind of having to rush. Magale stays in at quarterback. Montgomery is running back. Now Montgomery goes in motion to the short side of the field where he'll set up to potentially be the recipient of a screen pass. Said Magale will go on the right side. Incomplete miscommunication there. A little win on a in route. Mongolia looked like he was going to the outside. Roka might have got a finger or tip on it. And the Tigers with the clock stop take plenty of time. In the play, in Montgomery in motion again. Magale runs it this time. A little RPO, and he'll decide to keep it. He'll be drugged down from behind by Darian Thompson. Gain of one on the play, and that may be the last play of the game. Tigers might want to try to run one more. They 
may try to get this one last playoffs. So we're inside of 10 seconds to play. Longley takes the snap. Three seconds, two. Pass, deep pass, incomplete. And that'll be the ball game with the final score. Reddy's 41, game. East Central 13. A big win on opening night for the Reddies. We'll take a timeout and come back with your post-game show after this. This is Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer to give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia, or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Arkadelphia or call 870-246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Your best life begins with your healthiest life. At Baptist Health, you'll find the comprehensive care you need for every person in your family. From pediatrics to primary care to women's health, we're equipped to partner with you in every phase of your wellness journey. You'll also find Baptist Health locations and clinics across the state, ensuring we're always there for you when and where you need us. Learn more about the state's most trusted name in healthcare, locate a clinic, find a provider and more at baptist-health.com. Welcome into the Hampton Inn post-game show. When you travel, it matters where you stay. And that's why the Reddies choose Hampton Inn, the official hotel of Ready Athletics. Stay at the Hampton Inn of Arkadelphia to enjoy their free Wi-Fi, complimentary hot breakfast, and spacious rooms. Hampton Inn, we love having you here. And we love a big Ready win like we get tonight. Final score, Reddies win it 41-13. to give you some final stats. First for East Central who with the loss to 0 and 1 on the season. 68 plays for 293 total yards. 226 through the air, 67 on the ground. Nine penalties for 113 yards for the Tigers. 19 first downs. They were 6 of 14 on third down. 1 of 3 on fourth down. They were one of one in the red zone, a time of possession of 28 minutes and 19 seconds. That one turnover came at the end of the game. It was the lost fumble. They had six defensive tackles for loss. Treyer Edwards, 19 of 27 passing, 196 yards and two touchdowns. JFA Magale, six of 12 passing for 30 yards. Edwards, the leading rusher, 13 carries for 54 yards. Leading receiver, Dior Scott, seven catches, 54 yards. C.J. Moore, six catches, 98 yards, and a score. Out. Jackson Allen also had a touchdown. For the Reddies, 400 yards of total offense on 66 plays. That's right at six yards a play. 276 through the air, 124 on the ground. Ten ready penalties for 80 yards. 23 Henderson first down, six of 12 on third down, one of two on fourth down. They were four of five in the red zone. The missed field goal, the only missed opportunity there. A 30 minute and 54 second time of possession. Six fumbles, none of them lost. Four sacks and eight tackles for loss. The defense came to play for the Reddies. Andrew Edwards, 17 of 25 passing, 276 yards and four touchdowns. Corian Burrell, the leading rusher, 20 carries for 60 yards. 
Timion Jackson, the leading receiver, six catches for 82 yards. Chris Hatz is seven catches, 79 yards, and two touchdowns. Elijah George, two catches, 50 yards, and a score. Jalen Abraham, two catches, 48 yards, and a score. A big defensive debut for the Reddies for Zach Dixon. Five total tackles, a quarterback hurry, half a sack. Fred Lewis with a big night, four tackles. Four tackles also for Kirby Owens, Darian Thompson, Jacob Neal, and Tyler Strain. A full effort on behalf of the Reddy defense. And we'll take this time to announce our first ever Hostess Player of the Game. It's time to name our Hostess Player of the Game. Hostess is proudly creating job opportunities here in Clark County. Be sure to try one of their Twinkies, Donuts, or Jumbo Honey Buns today. And for your Hostess Player of the Game this week, let's go with Chris Hatzis. Some big catches, some great yardage after the catch. Five catches, 79 yards, and two touchdowns. A couple of really big touchdowns for the Reddies as they pulled away. The Reddies outscored East Central in the second half, 17 to nothing. Part of a 31 to nothing run to end this game. Reddies scored 31 unanswered points to finish this one up. Again, 41-13, your final score. Reddies take this one tonight. Our next scheduled broadcast is Saturday night, September the 9th. Reddies hit the road for the first of two road contests. They'll be in Durant to take on the Savage Storm from southeastern Oklahoma. Let's get you one more Southwest Sporting Goods scoreboard update before we wrap things up here tonight. Final score from Weatherford, Washita defeats southwestern Oklahoma 38-14. to Looks like a second-half coast there for the Tigers. Final score in Bethany Harding defeats Southern Nazarene 53 to 20. And of course the story there was the four first half rushing touchdowns by Blake Dela Cruz. In Magnolia, Southern Arkansas 34, Southeastern Oklahoma 19. The Mule Riders win their opener at home. Final score from Alva, Arkansas Monticello 49, Northwestern Oklahoma 24. DeMilan Brown, 23 of 44, passing 388 yards and four touchdowns. Final score, and this one came down to the very end. And Tech had a chance for a touch, got a touchdown, got the extra point, could not get the onside kick. Oklahoma Baptist, 23, Arkansas Tech, 21. It was a close game. I predicted a close game. But after this week, I have a record of five and one in my picks. The only one being, the only miss rather, being that Oklahoma Baptist Arkansas Tech game. The, what matters is the big win for the Reddies, 41-13, your final score again. We will talk to you next week in Durant, Oklahoma. A six o'clock kickoff, which means we'll be on air with the Domino's pregame show live from Paul Laird Field at 5 p.m. For all of us here at Henderson State University and Lance Larkin back at the Arkansas Rock Studios, this is Blake Smith signing off saying good night, go Reddies, and thanks for listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Brookshire's proudly supports the Henderson State Reddies football team. At Brookshire's, you